That clock keeps ticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home But my balls keep telling me to let me oh Oh, just let me oh That clock keeps ticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home But my balls keep telling me to let me oh Fuck all that shit, just let me go Goers and tastemakers make us no chaser Gets the blood flowing like a fucking pacemaker Cut the middle man and inhale the vapors Mad men, Old ten time drapers Cut the jukebox on, make the woofers blow go. We gon' sit here until all them heifers go. go Holler at the tens and spend a little dough Not on them, no, they can buy their own drinks That clock keeps ticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home But my balls keep telling me to let me oh Oh, just let me oh That clock keeps ticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home But my balls keep telling me to let me oh Fuck all that shit What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Wrestling Rundown. First rundown in a little less than a year since uh, Forbidden Door hype last year when we did the crossover with ATWU. We're back doing it again. We obviously haven't done one in a while considering the fact that uh, schedules and everything are just busy. But I decided it was finally time to bring this back. If this does well enough, you'll see you'll start to see a lot more rundowns. Uh, I'm Owen the Birdman. Uh, yeah, about every month, yeah. Um, I'm Owen the Birdman Finch, and I'm here with the man who produces all of the content that I do, ever. And uh, the man that produces other people's content, the man that's been with this show, no matter what the name is, since the beginning, James the Heatman Heber. How are you today? I'm great, and I'm tired, and holy shit, how am I up? And Noah will probably <laughs> say the same thing. I don't know how this has happened. <laughs> I'm also here with uh, the hardest working man in professional wrestling who doesn't even work for the business. He does it for the love of the sport. Noah Foster, he's a simple man. What's going on? Hey, what's up? It's been a while. I almost got no voice. And uh, yeah, I mean, a whole lot's going on with how much wrestling I watch and how much sleep I've had later the last 24 hours. The number is zero, by the way. But it's good to see you again. Oh, it's good to be back on this platform. <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate you being on here because you really don't have to do this uh, with everything that you do. And I'm here with the man making his debut on the wrestling rundown. First rundown, hopefully, of many, the renegade, JJ. How are you? Doing well, Owen. Thank you for having me today. I apologize again. You know, the fans don't know, but I completely forgot about this today. So, you know, <laughs> thanks to a phone call from James over here, reminded me a little bit of role reversal. Yeah, you I was about Mike to Knight. say, I yeah. I'm the, yeah, I'm I'm the, the one calling you. Calling bro, you. Bro. Bro, where you at, bro? Bro, you need bro, I need studio, you back bro. here, bro. Bro, come on, bro. <laughs> you said you were over here, bro. Today, come on. Come on, bro. Today was a little role reversal. James was calling me like, we're waiting yeah. on you. Is like, for what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I call him and he goes, for what? And I'm like, uh, the thing that you said you were going to be able to uh, do on this day at this on, time? <laughs> Our show is too bushly for his. For, for no, his. no, it ain't even that, Owen. It ain't even that. Just like Noah here, man. I've been running. You figure, come against all odds next week. Owen, Noah up here will have called six shows for the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media, plus his prediction shows, plus his simple takes. Plus any yeah. retros plus, that we have him do on top of yeah, that. Plus retros. I have my Renegades reviews that go up every week, plus promoting and doing open mic night, plus being color man for him on two of those four things. I've just been running ragged, too. I'm going to be on the No DQ review this evening. Yeah, so. You know, as we film this, I'm not sure if this is this live. This is going to be after this that. Remember, so. but I'm going to be on the No DQ review tonight. Yeah, so, that's fair, like, yeah. Just a whole lot of stuff on my plate, too. Thank God it's summer. You know, I know, yeah. True. Kids well, yeah. are out of school. Things are a little bit easier for me. So. But it's yeah, good I, to be I, here. I feel you. Yeah, like, so today we're going to cover all of the shows that took place last week. Night of Champions, Battleground, Resurgence, Under Siege, and Double or Nothing. You're probably wondering why we delayed this a week. I was away last week. So I missed all these shows. I had to watch them after the fact. And this was just the best possible way we could do this. I know it's a week late. A lot of the stuff that we're going to say doesn't isn't going to apply. But this is just the only way we can make this happen. 
Um, so it is what it is. Um, I mean, we'll we'll probably we'll probably go back and forth on the timeline because I doubt we're gonna be really going in like review depth like we do yeah. on all the other shows. Like yeah. we we have said it ad nauseum everywhere else at this point. So I think. What we're probably going to do is talk about our favorite moments from each company. And it could be from Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, Rampage, whatever, uh, New Japan, yeah. Star, Strom, whatever the case may be. We're going to talk about it. Uh, everything that basically led up to Resurgence all the way up to even Dominion. Even, even though I know you didn't watch it, but that was because it was like ass early in the morning. And this crazy uh motherfucker over here called it <laughs> yeah so, so yeah let's, there you go well you guys have been awake the entire time that was the time i actually got to sleep so you yeah. know there you go. Well, well, i didn't get to sleep he That's got to sleep too he got to sleep too but, but i did hear brian danielson yeah yeah and so yes. and yes. kazuchka yes. So, yes. <laughs> yes let's uh why don't we start with New Japan, since that's the topic right now. Uh, I'll go around and ask everybody. Uh, Resurgence was recently. Obviously, we won't talk about the um, specifics of the show, since there's live commentaries for it. I'll go around, and everyone can kind of give their thoughts on it. We'll start with uh, Noah, because he's covered New Japan a lot and stuff like that. Resurgence as a show as a whole, without going into full detail and everything like that. What do you think? I think it was a good presentation to bring New Japan back on American soil and a big picture. It made a lot of history, and it was really about putting a focus on women's wrestling. It was definitely the driving force of the night. All three women matches delivered despite the circumstances that happened uh, yeah. in the finals. There was definitely some wild moments, especially with Tony Storm showing up. And then even James had a fun with what was the slowest match of the night. And then, of course, anytime you can get Okada in front of you, you know you're in for something. I think that Scott and Eber Kabani have a great dynamic also for yeah. commentary. And I hope that becomes more of a permanent thing. I still find it to be a crime that Beta Scott is not permanently hired full-time for commentary for a company with the heck's wrong with you wrestling industry. But overall, it was a fun show. And the fact that we haven't had resurgence in two years, great callback. Yeah, it was really Yeah, cool. I, I agree. JJ, your thoughts on Resurgence as a show without going into too much detail? Well, my biggest thoughts on Resurgence as a show is I'm freaking sad as all get out that I wasn't able to go live. I mean, that was in my backyard. Oh, Cal yeah. State Long Beach. Like, I grew up just a few miles from there. And yeah. the fact that they were on my turf, me and the West Coast professor, Jeff Meacham, were this close to actually getting tickets to go. Just finances didn't come through in time. But overall, I echo Noah's sentiment, man. It was a good show. That Kenta match was what it was. I enjoyed you know, it. The, I still the enjoyed focus, it. The focus definitely being on women, and I'll get a little bit more in-depth into that as we go through all this because it was a hell of a week for women's wrestling, period, across multiple brands. Yep. Damn it. But yeah, for... For honestly really being my first introduction to the New Japan product in a huge scale, I really enjoyed it and was glad I was there to be part of things with these two gentlemen. Yeah, for sure. James? I, uh, I loved the New Japan Resurgence show. Uh, I thought uh, everything was just really, really good. Uh, the matches made sense. I got to see some of my favorites. I got to see some of the guys I've been watching for the long haul. I got to see some new faces that I literally started watching uh, starting when AEW Dark was still a thing. Shout out Bad Dude Tito, by the way. Holy shit, is he great. Uh, right? But yeah, uh, just all in all, really good show. I think, and, and I've said this, you know, while women's wrestling thrived, I think, this weekend, especially if you consider that they actually were a presence in Saudi, a big presence at that, by the way. Three matches. Mm -hmm. True that. I yeah. genuinely believe that, without a doubt, the first two matches in that tournament on that show, best women's wrestling I've ever seen all year. Yeah. Seriously. I think the, oh, the only one that comes close to me, but I agree, is Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Yeah. That, at WrestleMania yeah, this year, that rule yeah. too. But, but uh, this, I, think this, I think these two matches topped it. Just because uh, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that Rhea Ripley was going to win the title at Mania. These two matches were fairly, maybe not the Mercedes-Renee match, but at least the Willow Nightingale and uh, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, Momo Como, uh, I thought, you know, was really unpredictable and, yeah, really delivered. I agree. Yeah, I think both women on, on the opposite sides of those opponents delivered actually humongously. Like, they made themselves into stars that night. I thought yeah. that Mercedes was going to lose in round one. They actually how many made times, me believe. How many it. times? How many times did Stephanie Vakura have Mercedes Monet's legs throw it into that pretzel into every pinball decision? Yeah. Yeah, she was Tremendous. the she was the master of the pretzel roll ups, bro. Like, he, he, seriously, most dangerous move is the surprise roll up. Well, she's mastered that freaking hold, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like fifty. And modified yeah. it, modified to her own game. More CMLL, Stephanie Valkyra. She was tremendous. Yeah, Stephanie Valkyra, more more of her, please. Definitely, sure. I think she will. See, for for me, both of those matches were predictable, Owen, because I kind of figured Willow was going to take the first round match. I had talked to Noah about it when I first heard about these matches, and it's like, you've got to keep in mind that while Stephanie and Momo are great in their own right, the casual fan driving around the city seeing the advertisement for this is going to see Mercedes, FKA Sasha Banks, and Willow Nightingale advertised, and they're going to come to the show expecting for them to be the finals. Those are the most recognizable names on the poster as far as the women go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it was predictable. What wasn't predictable was Willow winning the title in the finals. But from everything I've read and heard, that was an audible because Mercedes yeah. legitimately got injured and they just had to ad lib it. So yeah, and- I wouldn't be surprised to see Mercedes get the belt off of her in a rematch down the road. Russell Kingdom. But that was that was the most surprising factor. Or Forbidden Man. Door, depending on how serious the injury is. That is fair, yeah. actually. I didn't even think about that. Or All In and Wembley, too. I could see yeah. I could see them loading that show with an, uh, a couple of New Japan matches there, to be honest. No um, doubt. I think what is crazy to me is that, you know, Sasha knew she was hurt. And so, obviously, she made what she basically did out of everything here was make a star in one night out of Willow. Cause I holy agree. shit. Yeah. I mean, how do you make a statement? Shoot beat. <laughs> Essentially one of the top women's wrestlers in the effing world and win a championship when you have never won singles gold in your entire life. That's a hell of a statement. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and, and, and it's something first. to be said for Mercedes too. With everybody talking about her diva personality and attitude, especially after the walkout last year, for her to take that upon herself to make Willow to put agree, the strap yeah. on her instead of taking the title and then having to surrender it because of injury, calling that audible, putting her over. That goes a long way for the anti Mercedes people out there as well. Yeah, I agree. Going through the show about what I thought of it, I'll kind of run through it real quick since I haven't talked about it yet. Um, I thought this was a fantastic show. I really enjoyed this show. I had a lot of fun watching this show. Um, the press conference was really good, uh, really put in uh, intrigue to the show. Uh, the show itself, I like the commentary team for the most part. Typically, I'm not a fan of sometimes of these people on commentary, uh, but I thought they all put on their working boots. I'm not the biggest fan of Alex Kozlov on commentary, admittedly enough. I don't really think he brings much to the table, but I thought Vader and Ian Carey did enough where it was good good enough. The two pre-show matches I really liked, which was Bateman versus the DKC and uh, Alex Kovlin versus uh, Christopher Daniels. They were good. It really sucks they didn't really get much of a crowd because they were uh, the doors had literally just opened, but they were still yeah. good enough matches. Uh, Christopher Take Daniels are really... Yeah, I, I really respect Christopher Daniels for putting over Alex Hovland the way he did, but yeah. um, I thought that he made him look, look, made him look strong in defeat. Fred Wasso announced that there were some new uh, classes going to take place. The opening tag match really surprised me just because the, all their styles seemed different, and I didn't really know Virus or uh, Bob Brino Carvin- Uh But I actually thought everybody in that match uh, really delivered. They all brought a different style to the match. I think Zach Zebra Jr., uh, really stood out in this match. He's yeah. really excellent. He's got to be like, if we made like a top five list of just the best technical wrestlers in the world. He's, exactly. the, he's yeah. up there for sure. He won that. He won. Um, so when Danielson retired, 
I he's won, yeah, he won it. He won he's the pretty Brian, much won. Yeah, he won the. Uh, I know we don't credit Uncle Dave a lot, but like he he renamed yeah. it to the Brian Danielson Award, the Technical Wrestler Award, to the Brian mm-hmm. Danielson Award. Yeah, Saber Junior won that like. Yeah, he's won it six, seven times. Something crazy. A lot, ridiculous. yeah. So that mm-hmm. so that really delivered. Masane is my na- the two women's tournament matches. Like I talked about, I kind of gave my thoughts there. The street fight I thought was the sleeper match. I really enjoyed the street fight. Yeah. I really liked how New Japan did something different. And even though Fred Ross is the face and Juice Robinson's the heel, they kind of change it. Well, it wasn't a double turn, but like even like the commentators were like, yeah, this is too far right here. But Fred Ross is still remained a baby face out of it. I really liked that they changed that dynamic there. That's that's sh- when Tony Storm showed up. A lot of people popped, and uh, I just thought this was the best way they could have done. They kind of did a double turn, but they really didn't do one. But this was the best way. Uh, I think they did it. Um, I thought this was great. Obviously, the biggest, the saddest thing was Kyle Fletcher having to give up because Aussie Open have to give up the both tag titles, the Ugh. strong and the heavyweight Damn. tag titles. Damn. Um, yeah, dude. It was. It's really sad. Um, they, he announced that the tag match uh, Dominion between uh, House of Torture, which he called the House of uh, Borcha, which I agree with, and uh, Bishamon were going to be for the both belts. Um, but yeah, it, it was really sad. I mean, it's the nature of the business. I thought something was off when he was there and uh, Mark Fletcher wasn't there. Uh, sorry, Mark Davis wasn't there. Um, but I kind of figured something was wrong. Um especially because he wasn't in his wrestling gear or anything like that. But, you know, it's the nature of the business. I kind of hope they do stuff with Kyle Fletcher's singles for a little bit. Maybe he can yeah. contend for, the, for like, TV titles. Or, like, he can go be be a part of the X-Division and Impact if he wants to. In well, he's in, a, he's in AEW now, so he's probably there for the long haul. Do you know what actually happened? Uh, I couldn't what? really hear it because the mic didn't pick it up, but I don't really Leg sure. injury. So. It's a leg injury. Yeah, so it's a leg injury. But what I happened think... was... So Tony Khan got wind of this, right? And before he even signed him, uh, he paid for all of Mark Davis's uh, medical bills out of pocket, and okay. then signed the guys, which is why they oh. were signed despite Mark Davis being injured. So he just did that just to, you know, out of the kindness of his heart. Also, probably really, he really wanted them that bad. But. Really props to Tony Khan then. Like, a lot of people won't say great things about him, but I think props to Tony Khan. For yeah, I, th- I, th- so. I think he needs his roses there. Uh, the Strong Openweight title match I thought was good. The finish really sucked. Um, <laughs> I thought that... I See, this is where you and I are going to di- differentiate, and everybody else agrees with me here. That match stunk, but it was so bad it was good. <laughs> it was okay. so funny. Bro, the slowest walking brawl of all time, all the way to the freaking bleachers. Well, they're not even like a quarter way up this thing, and it it ends with a yeah. back body drop through this like dodgy ass table, and then he crawls back into the ring and wins a title via count out. Yeah, I get Bro. they wanted to do that. They wanted to do this someday because uh, they wanted to get over that rule, but this was not the match to do it for. What was the point of putting the belt on Hikaleo if you were just going to take it right off him? Because clearly no they idea. wanted, yeah, the, clearly they wanted to do Eddie Kinson versus Kenta for the belt, which is perfectly fine. But it's like, why did they take the belt off him? Hikaleo, I think, stop. This hurt Hikaleo a lot. This made him look stupid, and this was just. Him. I think I Kenta, that. I think Kenta needs to hang up the damn boots at this point. He is so injury prone that he has to probably. He probably had to shortcut his way into this match. That's probably yeah. why they did it this way because he's constantly hurt. I mean, the guy's made out of fucking paper mache. Yeah, he's made out of glass that John Moxley used on that freaking barbed wire board chip, whatever oh, it was. <laughs> Like bro, he's, bro, yeah. this was straight up Vince Russo booking, bro. Yeah. All that was missing, bro, was Judy Bagwell on a pole, bro. <laughs> it was different, bro. That was, bro, it made it different, bro. It made it different. I feel like Ratings, I feel like too, bro. I feel like too. What kind of hurt this too was it, it, they did like a match like this right after the street fight. They should have spread these out too. Oh my really make god, yeah, that made it even worse. That's it's, fair. Yeah, that's fair. I didn't even think about that point, yeah. Owen. I'll be that's real. That's a very good point. Booking order. I. I it, Kenta and Eddie Kingston would have been a great match, like, fuck, ten years ago, maybe five years ago. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I would have rather see Kingston fight Hikaleo, see what he could have done against yeah. him. Yeah, that would have been good. They probably want to have, they probably want, you know, uh, 
I don't know. They want the heel and face dynamics because Kidson's going to be more open than Hikaleo would. So maybe they think that would hurt Hikaleo a little bit. So I can understand that, I guess. Um, the Independence Day tour was announced. It's going to be on July 4th and 5th um, in Japan. Really weird that it's going to be in Japan, but it's what it is. Um, oh, yeah, because yeah. they were taking the, the, the brand to Japan, but it's on yeah. Independence Day for the U U.S. Okay. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. But I... I you know, there's there's some people announced that I'm looking forward to seeing. We'll if we we'll probably cover that show. The six man tag between John Moxley, Willa Yuta, and Sota Umino That's versus awesome. Kasuski Okayo, Tomo Ishii, and Rocky Romero. This was really good. I thought everybody yeah, was, was really strong in this match. Um, Sota Umino had a breakout performance. So this is just me saying John Moxley's star power to me has diminished a little bit. So he did not feel like a big star when he came out here. Um, I thought maybe just because it's New Japan, but it, uh, I felt the same way when I, was, when I was watching Anarchy in the Arena. Um, mm. But I still like him and everything. I'm not one of those people that instantly shit on him, but it, he doesn't feel like a big star anymore to me. Oh, maybe, he still you, is you, a, maybe yeah, he might be just more comfortable in that spot at this point. You think about this whole gang mentality and, and faction warfare. He doesn't have to be the guy. He let others be that. You think about Willow Yuna about for Combat Club. Yeah. Yeah. In Japan, he's doing that with Shota Umino. John Moxley is guy in the future. Yeah, that's that's fair. It's, yeah, it's especially kind of the same thing with Ronda Rousey in the women's tag division. You know, when she came back this last time, she didn't want to be singles champion. She wanted to do the, the tag thing with Shayna, and now she's finally doing that. She's finally helping Shayna rise up the roster like she needed to. Moxley's yeah. kind of in that same position right now. Doesn't and need to be, be the star. He should be. But yeah, very. He's, that. he's done everything. <clears throat> but yeah, very good match here. I enjoyed the hell out of this. Um. I really liked how they uh, were very good in like keeping Okada and Moxley apart from each other because I was thinking that was going to be the match at um, Forbidden Door. I thought they did a good job. They didn't really go at it too much. The only thing I would have cut from the match is probably the Waymaker Okada did. I think that that shouldn't have happened in the match, but other than that, I would have kept everything that they kept. Because typically New Japan, I like New Japan and all, but they always make the mistakes where they do these tag matches and they have the guys that are going to fight the pay-per-view go at it. That doesn't really yeah. help anyone. That's yeah. my opinion. I know you, as everyone in New Japan is used to that, but I'm kind of used to, you know, you save the big matches for the big shows. I know that's a very WWE type of take, WWE fandom take, but I still think it kind of... I, I Like, I remember, like, uh, when I was watching, like, Wrestle Kingdom or something, I was going to watch one of the big New Japan shows. I watched all the shows, like, Road to This, so Road to That. And all the matches uh, I had already seen because they went at it so often in the tag match. Okay, this doesn't really feel special. I'm really glad that this time, uh, at least the U.S., then, like, actually uh, ha didn't have Moxley and Okada go at it. Again, I just would have cut the acid rainmaker. But, again, I, ca I guess I I'm okay with saying that now, just considering the fact that that's not the direction we're going in. Yeah, by, by the way, your acid rainmaker is Jimmy Havoc, bro. He's no longer a thing. It's just, just rainmaker. Rain just rainmaker. Yeah, maker. it's yeah. just the rainmaker. Um, but then again, the new gimmick. Yeah, number one contenders, by the way, for the... <laughs> Uh, IWGP US title round one match. That match ruled. That was awesome. That was my favorite match of the whole show. This match ruled. Will Ospreay, Ospreay and Tanahashi. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah these this, guys this, killed it. I gave it like five stars when I was writing my thin. Will Ospreay is like one of my favorite wrestlers in the world. The guy just gets how to do business. The guy I think is working hurt because he was holding his ribs a lot during this match. I don't think he was selling because he doesn't take any damages with the ribs. This guy is clearly working hurt and he's still putting on painters like this. And Will Ospreay is just a star. Um, yeah. I think that he doesn't just do like the high spots and everything like that. The guy has actually crafted his character. He has really good formals. And this turning heel and put and forming uh, the United Empire was the best thing that could have happened. But this guy is a star. And the second he hits the free agent market, uh, he should be signed to a, a big company like AEW or WWE or something. Like this guy is a star. Uh, yeah, he Honestly, might, he might be at AEW uh, as quick as tomorrow with how yeah. Tony Khan signed uh, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis, and they're still yeah, this guy in Japan. So. This guy is a star. Like New Japan, honestly, uh, this is good. I really think New Japan should build like the company around him. I know they do, yeah. but he should be, he should be the guy. Like um, I know J I liked Jay White and everything like that, but Will every Will Osprey is just a star. He, I really like Will Osprey. Have the United like, Empire differently. Have the United Empire. Uh, United Empire is already the premier faction. If yeah, which is awesome. They the, they've pretty much usurped Bullet Club as the premier faction in Japan now. It's really all about the United Empire. And then uh, yeah, so uh, and then obviously the main event, 
I, I was enjoying the match. It is what it is, what happened in the main event. It was obviously an audible and everything like that. The referee was kind of, I think the referee deserved some flack because he should have just countered the yeah. pinfall anyways. Um, that's just my opinion. I get the referee was in a bad spot there, but he, you, when you're told to, when you're told to count, you're supposed to call it like a shoot. The ref should have counted the pinfall. But if the ref had just counted the pinfall, I don't think anyone would have even noticed what happened. They probably would have been like disappointed because, yeah, it took one cut winch, like uh, power bomb and all that type of stuff, but it's like, eh. Yeah, yeah Dr. Dr. Bomb. Yeah. But they well, should they should the the idea with the Dr. Bomb too, the way she did this Dr. Bomb was deadlift. She legitimately was deadlifting Mercedes for this freaking Dr. Yeah, yeah. Bomb, bro. What but I'm just saying the referee the referee should have called sort of counted the pinfall anyways, because that's what should have happened. Oh, um, that's fair. I agree. But, uh, but I, I agree, but it also kind of made Mercedes look strong in defeat and the fact that they had to do a second one to get the pinfall. Yeah, that's fair. And then she cuts a really passionate promo afterwards. It was very good. I really think Real Os- no, uh, Rillo Nightingale uh, was the right decision to uh, win this title first anyways. I know Mercedes Monet is going to get the numbers and all that type of stuff, but if you watch the press conference, Rillo, Rillo Nightingale was really the right choice. She's been on the cusp yeah. of breaking out, and uh, I think she. I think they had to make a new style here. And Mercedes Monet already got the people there. She did the job she needed to do. I think Real Nightingale was the right choice to go. With. Um, it does suck that um, mm. Mercedes Monet's injury kind of overshadowed that um, and the finish and everything like that. But at least it didn't. At least we didn't have uh, what happened last year with MJF. At least it was an injury this time that overshadowed it. So yeah, that is um, true. That's fair. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, anything else? Uh, what surgeons wise, you guys want to talk about? Uh, I th- I get what you're saying, Owen, about making Willow and a star. I still feel that Mercedes was the right call for this show just because it's not as big of a show. Had Mercedes not gotten injured, they yeah. always could have ran it back at Forbidden Door match two, and then it would have been a bigger stage to put Willow over on. That's or fair. even again, run it back at Wembley, bigger stage to put Willow over on. That's fair. Um, let's do letter grades. Uh, I do like the le- actual letter grade, so like obviously a S rank is the best grade that breaks the scale, and the worst grade is obviously an F. Uh, I don't think you can go lower than an F. I think I've tried before, but I don't think that you can. Um, Damn. So Noah, what would you give New Japan Resurgence as a letter grade? Well, like I said, it was two year hiatus since the New Japan America brand was really on their biggest show today, and in, in their uh, inception, they made a lot of history. They really pushed forward the mentality of women's wrestling. And despite the Mercedes Monet incident, I feel the tournament did hold up to what it needed to to crown the first women's champion. You had a nice dynamic with this tag team, probably nobody knew about with CMLL um, as well. That surprised us. Got the better Zack Sabre Jr. Everybody performed strong, pun intended. And I really enjoyed this show. Besides the Hikaleo Kenta thing, which might have been so bad you laughed at, but still was bad to begin with. And the booking order also kind of hurt it a little bit. I give it a, a, a fair, because uh, eh, again, I don't do like letter grade, like straight letter grades. I look at like the whole like scale and stuff like that. Some errors, but still a strong show overall. Respectable work by everybody. A minus. Yeah, I agree. Uh, J- JJ, you agree? More or less, I was thinking B+. Plus. I've I've never understood the S-grade rating, personally. It's a fighting I, game thing, I, to be fair. I know. I've watched videos about it. I just don't get the concept of it. Yeah, so either. I'm just going to stick with, like, traditional education, A through F. Yes, I, I agree. A-, minus B+, plus, somewhere in that general range. I mean, the down points, obviously, were... As Noah said, Mercedes getting injured, the Kenta Hikaleo match, or at least the placement of it, trying to follow the street fight, Aussie Open having to come out, surrender the belts due to injury, but pretty much everything else on that show fired on all cylinders. And again, you mentioned the Christopher Daniels thing when you ran through the matches one by one. I felt so bad that that SoCal legend had an empty gym to perform yeah, to. I was yeah. so like, he should have at least been the first match on the legitimate card. How are you going to have the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels 
on the pre-show. And with nobody there, I would have been all right with In it. In SoCal, if, like for real, yeah. he helped make SoCal. If yeah. I say he's a SoCal guy, SCU, literally. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, I don't have an issue with him being on the pre-show, it's the fact that he was on in an empty fucking arena. Like, delay the show if you have to, for fuck's sake. It's yeah, that was Daniels. He's going over to put over your big hoss, fucking Alice Coughlin. Yeah, especially to the pop, he would have gone. Would, would have been huge. Oh probably, my too. god, yeah. Yeah. You can, I mean, maybe they didn't. I, swear, I think there were more people in the empty arena halftime heat match between Rock and Mankind than there were in that show. Oh my God! Yes. I, and you again, very I, well could have been right. God. And again, I've talked to people about this before. I don't like any watching any empty arena match, obviously for the pandemic reasons. So this is, I get this. This just brought me back to that. That's all I was thinking about when I was watching this. Oh, yeah, nice. we're um, back. To, we're back to the pandemic. Oh, no, <laughs> no. no, 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 don't go back down that road. No. But I agree with uh, James and Noah. I think the show's an A minus. I think the biggest thing that New Japan did for me that I really liked. I can't watch the New Japan product all the time. I know, obviously, everyone that's there and everything like that, but obviously it's on ass early in the morning. If you guys knew me, like James does outside of uh, YouTube, you know my schedule can be really hectic. I can change at any point. Any point. That's why sometimes. That's why this almost didn't happen Join today. The um, club! Sorry, go ahead. But the thing that New Japan did, I watched all the video packets. They really did a good job yeah. of like letting people know like the casuals and stuff, like who these people were. Usually, that's a big critique that everybody has when they uh, come into oh, like I a hear. hardcore thing. But New Japan really did a good job, like showing video packages of these people, promo packages. They really did a good job of that. Yeah, they were they were one hundred percent, and they did a good job of blending talent. You know, they had people that made their name in SoCal like Daniels, like Bateman, like Bad Dude Tito. They had the AEW contingent, and then they had their New Japan regulars. They had a great blend of everything. CMLL as well. CMLL had some representation, like big mm -hmm. time representation, which, by the way, uh, is massive because AAA... Uh, and New Japan were working at Death Before Dishonor, which tells me that CMLL and AAA are well, on good terms right now. That's a big thing for me. Like that. That's yeah. huge. A big th New Japan and CMLL have always had a good partnership, anyways. I'm pretty sure they do shows like together. And, yeah. They do Fantastic Mania. It was always Triple A and CMLL that had a bit of beef. There's a reason why Andrade Illegal, for example, wasn't on Forbidden Door uh, last year. Yeah, yeah, but that that's changed now because Tony Khan promotion, you know, uh, well, Honor, also uh, AAA uh, and New Japan were on the same show there. So that's also changed because Andrade uh, is not there anymore. So well, yeah, for now, for now, yeah. But if put it this way, right? If uh, Lucha, I know Lucha Brothers are technically signed to AEW, but they also wrestle in AAA. And yeah, then I so think they, can... they also have Roosh and uh, Roosh and Draglistico. Draglistico is a big time AAA star there. So, yeah, he is. You know, two AAA teams right there, and they're working with uh, Aussie Open in the same match. So, you know, you couple that with the fact that CMLL and New Japan are doing this show here, that, that's pretty yeah. big. That's pretty um, pretty freaking big because CMLL and AAA have been at war with each other promotion wise for fuck I don't even know how long. Yeah, like, it's far it, too long. It's way too damn long. So that's, that's I know, big. and that sucks because they they really should put aside their uh, differences and work together because uh, yeah they really, they could make they could be they could be big they could do like a forbidden duel Mexico type of show if they really work together and all that type of stuff like New Japan and Noah did. Uh, these past yeah. few years when they do Wrestle Kingdom, like night three slash night two type of thing. Deal. And now they're doing yeah. uh, all together with not only Perez and Noah in New Japan, but all Japan. Yes! yes. Let's, go. Let's go! Let's go! Yeah. Pay-per-view only, James. Pay-per-view only. Pay-per-view by only. Friends, you dot com. I know, I know, yeah. I know, but that's still cool. Well, we could get it, but... uh. Let's just say Casey, I think, would have to buy it, but I don't think Casey... I'm not well, gonna Casey, 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 yeah, Casey's... Uh, by the way, prayers to you, brother. He's doing good. He's doing good. I hope uh, to see him for our annual bracketology for G1, but at the end of the day, take care of your health, bro. Yeah. Yep. Let's go through now uh, the next show, and that's Impact Wrestling uh, Under Siege. I'll do the same thing. We'll start with James this time. What did you think of the show uh, overall? 
um, and everything like that. Well, I will say they saw what Fred Rosser and Juice Robinson had to offer, and uh, Steve Macklin and PCO said, uh, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, this I should mention, by the way, a lot of people are probably confused why we... I should have mentioned this before we even covered it. Why did we cover with Surgeons, even though it wasn't the same weekend? It just it was a big enough show. I feel like it deserved to be talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, so it was the why. week prior. We wanted to cover it, and it was a really, really good show. Like this, yeah. this show from Impact was awesome from top mm-hmm. to bottom. Man, like this showcased the best I fe- that everything had to offer, and they, I'd argue. That yes, while they're while they're not TNA levels of great, they're probably in the best position that I think I've ever seen them in, because their booking makes sense, and they have nope. a stable fucking budget. <laughs> yeah, so, they do. I don't care. I don't care. They could have. They could have had fucking. Um, at that, they could have had freaking Garrett Bischoff still employed by the company and his absolute dog worse, and I would have been okay with that being the case. At least it made I, sense. At least everybody's getting paid, and at least the booking makes sense. I'll go. I'll I'll go next and talk about this. I really liked this show. Um, yeah, just everything made sense. I'll go through it more in depthly in a second. Um, but um, Impact, I think I told a lot of people. I think was the sleeper best promotion last year. Uh, I feel like too they didn't have any bullshit really. They just kind of focused on doing them and had great wrestling shows. And I really like Impact. Uh, there you I go. really wish I, I really wish I could cover it more and talk about it more, but just time doesn't really uh, prevent uh, time prevents that pretty much. Uh, but I really she like Impact. Impact. <laughs> yeah, Impact is really a good promotion. I feel like it still gets that flag because it's Impact now. But I feel like they're start they really removed that flag now. There's still those people that don't want to cover it because you know. Uh, it was ruined to the point, but I feel like they've actually gotten rid of that flack now, and a lot of people, when they give it a chance, really like Impact. Noah, what do you think of uh, Under Siege? Under Siege is one of those shows that, again, I look at last year where I ended with Tomichi and Josh Alexander, and mm. you had the Bullet Club uh, war with the originals. And this was a different feel, but the name implied, especially at the end, I really enjoyed what I saw here. You had the Impact Wrestling debut of uh, Courtney Rush, which was sick. I love it. And, of course, you had uh, Trinity, who was involved, and Dion Brazo, Jordan Grace. Those two cannot do no wrong. They can literally mm-hmm. fight forever, every time, because the fact of the matter is she is the main event. Long may she reign. The show had a great flow. It had great dynamic across the board. Subculture had an uh, awesome uh, debut. What? Uh, Chris... What a tag match, by the way. Sleeper tag yeah. match. Let's just talk yeah. about that real quick. Like, ABC and Subculture. My God. Dude, I was so, like, I love what Subculture did in NXT UK and just seeing them in the spot. Like, this this felt like a, like, workhorse dream match that you would, like, book in, like, TEW or JOW or something like that. And then they just put it here and I'm like, what? I'm sorry, My what? Favorite- I like the match. My favorite thing about it, I'll talk about it, it was hilarious. Uh, Tom Hannafin mentioned that they were like a big tag team in 2018 in NXT. They didn't, no, they didn't even say NXT UK. They just said the UK, but they didn't mention it was in NXT UK because they didn't want to mention WWE. So they just said, yeah, they were a big tag team in the UK. They won the tag titles in 2018 and everything like that. And it's Which, really yeah. funny because he call, I, he didn't call the match where he won the belts, but I believe he was on the call when they lost the belts. Yes, so I think it's was. really funny. I've, I think it's really funny that, like, he ignored that history. And it's, well, he didn't ignore the history, but he ignored the show. It was basically like all over again. They did, uh, what's the name of that reunion show that they did for, e- for ECW? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. It was like Hardcore Justice, but they couldn't say ECW. Exactly. Yeah. And that was back during an era that people against the whole Impact Wrestling again. The Dudley overall... bo- No, no, no. DMC it. DMC it. Team 3D. There you I go. remember, too. I remember too. Uh, uh, I believe it's uh, Flash Morgan Webb. So he does like the same spot he did in the ladder match at Blackpool. And Tom Hannafin says it's the same match. He, he, it's the same thing he did at Blackpool, but he didn't mention uh, the show. He just mentioned that it happened. So. It, hey, he was technically there. correct because the show was called NXT Takeover Blackpool. Yeah, and but he again, wasn't. Like- con- and again, Impact Wrestling and the other companies acknowledge more of a wrestler's history. Hello, yeah. education, learn something, and for a couple of years here. Uh, yeah, that being good. said, yeah, this was just a fun show overall, and good lord almighty, the freaking closing match and end angle. Talk about really setting up your summer for what the hell could be coming ahead at Slimmerversity and uh, against uh, all odds. 
And Under Siege, again, the name implied there was warfare across the board here. And each match felt different. I really enjoyed this show. I almost enjoyed it, I think, a little bit more than Rebellion. And Rebellion was pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rebellion. Yeah, Impact, was, yeah. Uh, Impact does that sometimes where, like, they do these specials. I remember uh, some of them are good. Was, I remember there was one James and I covered. It wasn't the one you're thinking of, James. It was, uh, I think it was Hardcore Justice in 2021 during the pandemic. It was really thrown together and, like, could have By been Tommy just a regular. Dreamer. Did you call what it is? It was a Tommy Dreamer presentation. Yeah, and they, uh, they and to, in fairness, they did play up to it because they were making joke, They were joking around and all that type of stuff. And, Tommy uh, Dreamer yeah. literally booked every match. She's like, okay, you book it. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. Yeah, and then, well, the other show that we saw that they did an Impact Plus special for, this is, like, the infancy days of this. It, it's such a craptastic show that I want to do a retro on just for how bad it is. Yeah, it's really uh, bad. It, what was the show called? It was... Uh, I don't remember, but I remember... Uh, it was in it 2019, was... and it was like some joint promotion with some like local federation. And I mean like local. I'm talking yeah. like, you know, you go into like your first indie event local like with, you know... Joe Schmo from Kokomo fucking coming through. I know he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. It, 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 IPWF. IPWF. <laughs> yeah. No, Impact Wrestling no, versus IPWF no, no, or something. No, it wasn't IPWF. It was. It was oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. It was like. I I, I would have to find the, the show. but No, this is like I a remember. legit like, local fed. And so they like, did this thing. And, dude, really? Don Collis was on call with Josh Matthews, bro. He, couldn't have cared less. He could have cared less. Like He couldn't He couldn't give a shit. Okay, <laughs> like, so. Care Jeez. less. Like, yo, I'll tell you. Yo, another show when, we, when you look it up. There's a match where, like, it's all the local talent. Uh, Don Callis did not care. He didn't tell us at all who these people were. Yeah, and Josh <laughs> Matthews was just trying to get something out of this fucking guy. And and he's the one, by the way, at the time. Don Callis is like the president of this thing. Yeah. And, and Of Impact at the time. And he didn't fucking research a, a lick of this shit. But, and I want to tell... We'll also That's tell you how wrong. bad this was, Noah and JJ, too. Um... That you would think the production must have been good because it's an in- no. This was really that. This was Bro. like filmed on like handheld uh, like camera. Yeah, almost. and almost that's the like- thing. As good as uh, and Multiverse United <laughs> was too, but Multiverse United was not a local show, and it was way better because of the talent that was involved. But it was right. basically filmed like Multiverse United. So yeah. bad camera quality, which is why it's kind of hard for me to watch Multiverse United. Just saying, just just pointing it out there. Uh, it's a problem. Hopefully they step their game up for part two. Exactly. Uh, but part one was really bad quality wise. Now imagine that horrible camera quality and now you put it with a horrible show with horrible commentary on top of that. Yep. Yeah. That's, uh, but anyhow, let's, that's how you get an eye and ear bleed. Let's Jeez. go. Let, let's do a J. Oh, but what also, uh, one other thing. Killer Cam, I just is just out of nowhere, just brawling. That mm. was awesome. Yes. So, JJ, what did you think of Impact Under Siege? I thought it was a decent show. I, I have, like, no dog in the fight when it comes to Impact because I also forget it's on half the time and don't get to watch it. <laughs> I, I do co-sign to what you said, though, Owen, about how people need to try to give it a chance after the whole Hogan bischoff debacle. The, the stench has aired and cleared on that one. They definitely are better than where they used to be. Mm-hmm. I do enjoy getting to see some of the specials, courtesy of the Simple Man here, Hi. and being able to check some of those out when they air. But it, I was impressed. I, It wasn't my favorite show of the weekend, obviously, because like I said, I just really have no dog in the fight there. But it was some good matches. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I am kind of waiting on, and this is only based off of what I see off the specials, is I'm waiting for Trey Miguel to lose that X Division title. I'm mm-hmm. over him already. Okay. He's had so many challengers that have come up that should have defeated him, in my opinion, and he just keeps scraping by, keeps scraping by. It's like, I'm just waiting for him to lose that belt but, already. But, 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 but that's what heels do. Heels I know. find a way to win. You can't, you can't. I, you... Trust me. Trust me. There's, there's a certain heel at 1,008 days now that I do acknowledge that has done the same thing. But at least he's made those 1,008 days interesting. 
Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Is, well, Trey, no, Trey's done all right. Trey's done all right. But yeah, so go it. Going through it real quick. Um, Chief, the kickoff. The, the, they did a countdown special. It was basically a kickoff. They had two matches on there. It was the Coven versus the. I wrote, I wrote the Death Rush, but I think it's meant to say the Death, death Dolls. Death Dolls, dude. Death Dolls. Yeah, Death Dolls. Which, by uh, the way, I like Courtney Rush's look. So yeah, keep yeah. this. Uh, as it is. I, I, I figured this, James likes Courtney Rush because she's a gamer. <laughs> yeah, I liked this. This was good stuff. I always liked that. Uh, Rosemary or uh, anybody in there changes the gimmick up. It was time for Rosemary to do something new. The, the, I don't think Seven Rosemary years. was necessarily... Yeah, I don't think it was necessarily, like, stale, but they have a lot of dark gimmicks at the moment in Impact. I think uh, it was going to get lost in the shuffle. And, you know, I like the way they changed the gimmick where she, like, went into the Undeadly Realm and all that type of the stuff. Undeadly so makes Realm. Un undead Realm, Owen. Come on now. Undeadly <laughs> but, Realm. <laughs> but, yeah, I like, but, yeah, I liked this. I thought this was a good tag match. I don't get why it wasn't for the belts. It didn't really make sense, but it, yeah. but it was it, it is what it is. But it, yeah. I like that good tag match there. Digital Media title match was all right. It was probably the weakest match of the show. I didn't like that Dirty Dago got himself disqualified for no reason when he's the challenger. That real, didn't really make sense. That was terrible. But real um, quick, no, what do you believe? Of course, I believe in Joe Hendry and I'm the sorry. fat Dirty uh, Dango. The fat, the fat Dirty Dango again. He showed a different dynamic here, Owen. Which uh, hey, kudos to the character development. Now, but yeah, this match have... was kind of a bit of a meh. Now, yeah. Owen, do you believe in Joe Hendry? I believe in Joe, Joe Hendry. Hendry. Da, da, da. There we uh, go. It's all right, all right. Let's keep delete, going forward. Delete. He, delete. He, he, he doesn't believe in Joe Hendry. We got to We're trying to convert him. He, he, he's getting there slowly. Uh, yeah. I, I've, <laughs> although, I've although I did have to sing his theme song karaoke last night in open mic night you due to a good. bet I made with Noah. You did. You did. Pretty good. Now, yeah, I, I love how. I love how you made the uh, the bet, and I just went. I just went ahead and saying a song right away. I just <laughs> yeah. There see, you go. see, there's the thing. Yeah, see, he really, see. he really, it was really hard for him. He, he did. Something. Yeah. Well, see, see, the bet was regarding AEW Double or Nothing, which we'll get into in a minute. But it came down to the FTR Lethal Jarrett match. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, no. Because yeah. he is completely anti Jeff and Jer and Karen Jarrett. And I support the Jarretts wholeheartedly. So, if Jarrett and Lethal had won the belts, he would have had to see my world. Okay. And if FTR retained, which they did, and we'll get to that when they get to Double or Nothing, Thank I you. had to see Joe Hendry's theme song. Yeah, that's yeah, that makes sense considering the fact that uh, you know uh, FTR doesn't have lyrics in there. Uh, I guess he could have seen the world theme, but I don't think. Yeah. Well. I mean, yeah, do you remember the W theme? That is good grief. Yeah, it's so long ago. But see, um, I actually like FTR, so that's why we went with the Joe Hendry theme, because I'm not a fan of his. Yeah. And, um, so there you go. I was yeah. going to say, uh, before you continue as well, uh, I thought that Fandango did his uh, greatest Brock Lesnar cosplay ever. Mm -hmm. I liked the inclusion of uh, Santino here. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what Santino and Dirty Dango can do in like a feud together. I think that could be some pretty good stuff. I think yeah. it's going to be a comedy feud because they're both comedy wrestlers, but I feel like uh, Santino is a little bit more serious in Impact, which is good. Yeah, I was, about, I like. to, I was about to say, bro, bro fucking going full Italian mobster with it and going, yeah. for the girl, you piece of shit! <laughs> I'm like, whoa. I can't believe you actually said that. Whoa. It's really... It's really weird though because I don't think he's done the. You could tell. You could tell he hasn't done the accent really in a while because uh, he was like he he was talking like how he normally would talk, but was also well, I mean, doing the Italian. He is Canadian. Let's just put it out there. He is Canadian. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. See, see, when all else fails, just Super Mario Brothers Super Show it. Just Captain Lou Albano it. Just go fucking full. Yeah, but James. Just, just you know, don't go Italian. Go Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> Going through Damn. the actual show. I liked the code open for the show. I think Impact had the best code open out of all the shows. They really did a good job with the code open. They I know WWE. Code open. I I know WWE does good co code opens and everything like that, but I think Impact really delivered on the code open. I thought it was the best mm -hmm. one. Um, Nick Otis versus Kenny Ken. I thought delivered really well. I thought that was a very good opener right there. Uh, they dynamic. both. Um, I really like that dynamic. Uh, Nick Otis, I think, could bring something really unique to the. Uh, Impact Wrestling. He could bring that uh, NWA touch that he was doing in uh, NWA to Impact, and he kind of does that a little bit here. Um, 
I thought Kenny Ken looked really strong in defeat. Obviously, it makes sense for Nick Otis to win, considering the fact that uh, he just returned. Not that well, returned slash debuted since he wasn't Nick Otis when he debuted. When, uh, but they, yeah, I do like the fact though that uh, he's even though he's Nick Otis, they're not pretending that he was like not Magnus and all that type of stuff. At least his lineage still sticks with the company and everything. They should call him Nick. Ma- they should call him Nickus Magna- Magnus Aldus. That'd be funny. I do like. That's too uh, long but, for a Tron. I enjoyed that. I thought this was a very good opening match. Then they did the brawl, uh, which Nick Otis pointed out, with Killer Kelly and Master Slamovich. I like that they did this brawl. It made the show really feel unique. It made the um, it made it feel like that it could just happen really chaotic, and I really liked this a lot. I think they're having a match. No, you could I mean, aren't they facing off in some type of stipulation? Yeah, at, uh, yes, they lives. are. And damn it, I'm so pissed. I'm not going live. It will be Master oh, Slamovich nice. versus Killer Kelly. This Friday night in my home state, Columbus, Ohio, in a dog collar match. Now, Ooh, that's a be that's a rule. The, and now, real quick, also Noah, I found something that you and I will both like, but also you and I might fight over. Because uh, apparently, in hog wrestling, Natalia Markova fought Masha Slamovich. Oh lord! And Ooh, that a- looked like it was a banger. <laughs> I mean, Natalia real. Markova. She, like uh, they, she, they looked like they tore Joker. the house down. Natalia yeah, Markova is very capable in the ring. For those that don't know, all yeah, right? bro, she's they, fairly good. Yeah, no, I would say she's. You haven't seen her stuff outside the NWA, Noah. That, uh, no, I have. That's why you say that. I have. Actually, I have, James. She used to be involved. I know in you have, Dark. Yeah. And yeah. also, I've seen our promotions. They have she's really good, actually. She's really fucking good. It's scary how good she is, and how also, you can under- she's so sexy. Oh my god! But she's there also it is, really great. Jay, Jay. There yep, it is. Yep, yep. yep. I there told you it is. Before from James. Yeah. You can understand. You can understand idiot. why, James. Though I don't, because I, because if you only watch NWA stuff, you wouldn't know that. Oh, so. we'll, we'll get to the. Don't worry about it. But continue. Um. <laughs> Then we had the six-man tag. It was the Design versus Rich Swan, Sammy Callahan, and a mystery partner. The mystery partner ended up being Jake Christ. Um, Knew it. Jake Christ. I thought, yeah, Christ. Sorry, I always get that wrong because it's spelled Jake, similarly. Jake Christ. Oh, um, lordy lord. <laughs> but, yeah, I no. thought, uh, hey, it's That's not the funniest true. name I've ever screwed up. So, That's um, true. That is true. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it made sense. It had been a while since I've seen him. I remember I saw him last year, so it did take me a, member, a minute to remember who he was. But I'm like, oh, yeah, OBE and all that type of stuff. So it made sense. It was really weird. They should have just announced him because you do have a mystery partner. No offense to him, but you think I thought it was going to be like a big star or something like that. But it wasn't. It still, I don't think it, I think it's the impact crowd part, but obviously uh, I just thought they should announce him. I hope he comes back. There's no chance his partner can come back, right? He's pretty much out of the business forever because of this speaking point, out. Yeah, I think that's a yeah, yeah. Lost Dave, cause. Dave Christ is the one who is canceling the speaking out movement, which means honestly, it just means better things for all three of them because uh, I think Rich Swan's just a better replacement anyway. Yeah, Same. but yeah, the t- the tag match was very good. I really liked the depths here. I lo- when I saw the video package for the match, the storyline I thought was really good. I really like that they put Sammy Callahan uh, in the design. Tony D- Cody Dino was probably ready to take it over anyways, but I thought uh, it was a it was a good passing of the torch for him to take it over that way just because I don't know if he was probably ready to be a leader, but now I think he's ready to be a leader. I thought Big Khan really w- was impressive at this match. This is probably the best performance I've ever seen Dude. Big Khan ever have. Like he, Khan's he been looked shown really good. so well in Impact Wrestling. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Allen Five Angels. I'm going to get it to his hate for saying this. I think he made a good choice by leaving AW. I think he can really showcase himself a lot more and all that type of stuff. He was showcasing himself, I guess, fairly well in AW, but he just kind of felt like another guy in AW. Here, I think he's going to be like a big standout in the X Division and everything like that. So I'm really glad yeah. he gambled on himself. Because think about it. He took a big risk, by the way, leaving oh, AW. Oh, no doubt. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no. I mean, I- unfortunately, I think the Dark Order was just kind of doomed after the death of Brody Lee. You know, I never really heard about or saw them on TV after his passing. You yeah. know, unless it was getting trotted out for some kind of like battle royal or jobber match. Yeah, yeah and now the Dark Order are in Ring of Honor, and I think uh, they're they're in a feud with what's uh what's the what's the the Righteous, right? That's their name. Yeah, that's the faction. Yeah. Yeah, the Righteous. But I liked this. Uh, I liked this uh, t- six man tag. 
I always have a high spot, um, a soft spot for tag matches, as James knows. I love tag matches. I when I do fantasy bookings, I'll, I always book a tag match because really I love like, tag matches. He's like the Teddy Lawn of fantasy booking. He likes a tag team match play. Hey, holla play! I respect that. Holla holla. Holla holla. Uh, Twitty, we had had a second match Ooh. in the company. Third best Giselle match Shaw. out of the weekend, by the way. Third best women's match out of the weekend. Just saying. Yeah, really. Shaw is, good Shaw st- is amazing. So good. yeah, this was this was good stuff. I really enjoyed this. Um, I liked what they did here. They had a really nice back and forth match. Uh, Trinity slowly is uh, you know starting to break the wind rust. She still had a little bit of wind rust. I think she's much better at Impact. I remember some of her stuff would look botchy in WWE because I think sometimes when she'd wrestle the people in WWE, they didn't know how to take a offense. Giselle Shaw did not have that problem here. Every offense that Trinity hit in this match looked really good. I like that. I like the way she won. Uh, I'm really excited because she's going to challenge Gianna. I know this gives away the knockouts match, but it's the show's a week old. You should have seen it by now. Um, On YouTube. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing Deano and Trinity go at it. I think they're going to put on a beta. That's and be I really think, one. I think Trinity really uh, got impact back in good uh, in the highlights again. Uh, she's really uh, at, you know been a name for impact that they can have now in the knockouts division. The exposure. knockouts division, yeah, yeah good exposure. exposure. Yeah, great exposure. Uh, Wait, the real, tag qu- title- real quick, uh, Owen, go ahead, JJ. My only issue with her going after Diana at against all odds is I feel like it's too soon. It's uh, I think slam they should slow build. What's up? It's slam anniversary, not against. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm waiting a little bit. Okay. okay. But, that, but, but, that but. Was, that was going to be my statement is I think they should have waited to do that for slam anniversary. I didn't realize that that was when the match was going to be. My apologies. Yeah, you're, you're fine. Uh, and yeah. to be fair, they are building towards it. Maybe in a way that you can under. Maybe in a way that you probably would do it because at against all odds, it is uh, Tashel Shaw and Savannah Evans, her heavy, part of her entourage, taking on Dion Prazel and Trinity in yeah. tag team action. Oh, there you go. Oh, they're no, tag team partners that can't that doesn't get have WWE written all over it. Yeah, a yeah. little bit. I'm all right. Saying. Right. I should explain <laughs> myself to you, JJ. I wasn't ignoring you. I don't. When I do these shows, I don't have the Discord open. I'm like looking at my notes that way. He so if you would no like, worries. have the three screen like I do. No so, worries, bro. No worries. You're fine. If you got uh, so that uh, if you do say if you okay. are gonna say something, uh, you should just like I don't know. It's just tell. I guess just tell me. Just talk uh, over them. In other words. Uh, 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 I'll try to remember that. We usually get on everybody on open mic night for talking over everybody, so we try to exactly. raise hands and, you know, get acknowledged. You know, even if I, because I'm hosting moderate, and I usually do the same, same thing. I'll have a different tab that I'm going to for some kind of note or tidbit. Yeah, that's fair. Usually either James or Jeff will point out to me that someone had a question. So both di- um, Same thing, yeah. Owen. Go you know, for it. You know what you both actually need to get there's a uh, laptop extension like hardware that doubles as a d- two more screens for laptops i forgot what it's called off the top of my head to be honest but they do exist i would invest in one of them although they're probably hella expensive unless you find one that's cheaper yeah Amazon. no need to cover and honey no yeah no need to cover the tag title match we kind of covered that already um the only thing that was weird was they did the interview backstage with subculture and uh it's not the learning tree but it's uh the good hands and um it seemed like that they were setting up a tag title match between them and then they didn't really do it It, i I, I don't even think that should have been on the show that was just really weird they should have just done that like on impact this week that was just just odd um i thought the exhibition title match was a banner trey miguel versus chris saban i actually like um i actually Mm -hmm. like the heel one of trey miguel I know I'm gonna. I know uh, this is where you and I differ, JJ. But I really like it. It's something different he can do. He did better babyface for a while. I thought I, he could have stayed babyface, but it's nice to change up your gimmick every once in a while. And I really like that they changed his gimmick. And uh, I like the way he want, he retained the championship here. I really liked the callback because James and I just did this for a retro recently from TNA Unbreakable. If you guys remember, it was Petey Williams versus. Uh, Chris Saban, Chris when they Saban. did the finish, when uh, I think he had, he got the thumb in the eye and he nearly went to hit the, sh- um, not the cell shock, but the, the cradle, cradle, uh, shock. cradle, cradle shock, shock um, onto the referee. I, that was a really good callback right there. That was I really a great liked callback. that callback. I was so happy. It was like, it's like they watch our show. Why am I wrong? Yeah. Sorry. But yeah, I really like, I thought this X Division title match ruled. 
Uh, the X Division, I think, is like obviously um, it's not the best that it's ever been, but it's like second best it's ever been. Ever since the pandemic hit, I think the X Division has just been really showcased really well. Um, the X Division was always the draw for me when it came to NWA, TNA, TNA, Impact, whatever you want to call it. You know, those guys yeah. just, you know, it's all about no limits. Exactly. And they always showed out for that stuff, man. I that's why I have my X Division title right here next to me. I've got the OG NWA TNA replica. That's cool. Um, and they are gonna do a rematch. It looks like because Chris Sabin went and mouthed off to Adam backstage and stuff, which uh, you know was made a whole lot of sense. I would do a stipulation match. I wouldn't say Ultimate X just because I feel like that's too easy. I do like a ladder yeah. match. They might do Ultimate X though, like a multi-person Ultimate X then at like Slim. As, as long as long as it's not as long as it's not Elevation X, I'm fine with it. All right. Honestly, yeah. I would do multi Ultimate X only due to the fact that Trey Miguel's made a lot of enemies, and you could put all those enemies he's made in that match. And it yeah, would it's make the a best. lot of sense that's, to be honest. That's a fair that's a fair take. You are I'd have him attain I'd take. have him attain there too if I was booking it. I would have him have oh, yeah, yeah. he'd on he honestly should do uh I guess he can't do option C because Macklin's a heel. Uh but if they if if that if a baby face beats Macklin for the belt, whether that's like a Nick Otis, he should cash it in. He doesn't have to win the title necessarily, but he should cash it in and uh you know, win the champ and the win, not win it, but challenge for the belt and have a really good showcase in it. Yeah, they still could pull it off. Impact Wrestling knows how to flex. I have oh, Dar why am I raising my hand? I'm sorry, you forget. I, I forget you can't see us. Uh, I have a question. What's up? I have I, actually I more of an idea. What if Trey Miguel decided to do Option C, but for a different championship in the wrestling scene? And what would that title be? Most realistically, I would pair him to go one on one with uh, Claudio. Yeah, that's true. That would be a now, fucking banger. The question I have, though, I'm pretty sure they specifically said when they did Option C that it had to be the Impact World Title. Yeah, though. yeah when, Austin, when when Austin Aries defined it with Hulk Hogan during uh, that era, specifically for a World Championship opportunity, because again, why would you cash in any sort of opportunity you get? for anything less than the world championship. Are you really not trying to be the top person in your company when you literally have opportunity in hand? Come on, guys. Yeah. I am going to sound that's, like a hypocrite, though. A lot of people, I think, have that criticism when it comes to money in the bank this year. I actually don't hate right. that. Uh, here's why. They've don't actually worry. done a good job this year with the WWE making all the titles all of it. Like, you're going to tell me... I call him Walter here, by the way. I, I hope that's okay. That's um, I think we're I think we're all in agreement. Yeah. Like... Think about it. I, Walter ha has made the Intercontinental, and I have to be careful because if Chris watches this, then I have to call him the other name forever. Um, I've already screwed up a few names, so. But yeah, uh -huh. Walter. Um, uh, yeah, that's an inside joke, JJ. I don't think you. I don't think you get. But I, I think uh, you got it enough. You're good. Oh, but uh, Walt, I think the reason Walter, I would be okay with someone cashing on him. I think, would you really want someone to be the guy to cash in on the IC title? The IC title is kind of like a second, like a third world title at the moment because Walter's done a great job with that. Walter Intercontinental has done championship. phenomenally with that belt, hasn't he? I am he not really kidding about the, Intercon inter the Intercontinental Championship since 2016 to this legacy. G G Walter is incredible. Yeah. Go on, continuing. We'll, get, we'll talk about him in a couple minutes. Oh, uh, JJ, uh, JJ had something he wanted to say. What was it that you wanted oh, sorry, to say? Oh, sorry, I just literally, I, I no. just, I just literally okay. left the window like right when you raised your hand. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I I had my hand up when James did, but since he forgot that you couldn't see, I didn't feel so bad since you just told me. Okay. But um, you were talking about matches that they could do for the X Division title. I would go completely out of left field because I feel like an Ultimate X or a ladder match would be a little bit too predictable for the X Division. I'd go Monsters Ball. Oh, well, that'd they, be cool. They, I would. Huh. I understand where you're going with that, JJ. The problem is, they already did that with Crazy Steve. Yeah, on Impact well, Wrestling. Ago, I don't TV. watch Impact, so um, uh, that, that's why I'm here to guide you. But I mean, again, Trey Miguel, to his credit, has made himself. His, the face of the X Division. He's put his own mark on the championship. He's endured freaking uh, Ultimate X. He's endured uh, Triple Threat Big Hit Tournaments. He's endured uh, Lucha Lit. He beat uh, Black Taurus twice. He survived a Monsters Ball against Crazy Steve. Now he's beating Chris Saban. Another yeah. match they could do 
It's a really good match, I think, is underrated. The triple revolver, like, gauntlet match that they do. I really like that. They did that last year at uh, Victory Road. So, again, Mm -hmm. they could use that as the prototypical number contender for the X Division title. So, don't rule it out. And Victory Road is back again this year in September. Um, Then it had the uh, six-pack challenge. Um, where, where the winner gets a shot at the Impact World title at against all odds. It was Moose, Eddie Edwards, Jonathan Gresham, Yo Yo Amora, Alex Shelley, and Frankie Kazarian. Now, Noah, you could correct me because this is Alicia Edwards, I assume, isn't a heel at the moment, right? She's just kind of supporting her husband, Eddie Edwards, like she was. Oh, no, before. she's full on heel. She's yeah, a yeah, oh, thank you. I'm glad they made that. I'm glad they made that change finally, then. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Just in terms, it just really wasn't working. Her being a face. And him Listen, I'm just work. glad that Eddie Edwards is just not being a freaking Tommy Dreamer cosplayer. That's all I'm happy about. Uh, he but still, yeah, I he, really he like. Still swings a candlestick at times. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know, I, but at least he doesn't dress like Tommy Dreamer. It's good. It's an improvement. That's fair. <laughs> but I really like this multi-man match here. I have my window open, by the way. So if you have a question, you can just say something. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed this uh, multi-person match. I thought everybody got to shine in this match. It was really unpredictable who could have won this match just because everybody has had a history with Macklin. I know we could say uh, even Moose could have won it. I know this is a heel heel dynamic, but Moose and Macklin have a history from last year when they were uh, teaming up and when they went up against each other in uh, uh, Bob Wire Massacre. But I really thought yeah. the person that won made the most sense, and that was Alex Shelley, considering the fact that uh, Macklin took out uh, Kushida and that's Alex Shelley's tag partner from Japan and everything like that. And I yeah. really think, uh, even though it wasn't confirmed yet, it was uh, uh, Alex Shelley versus Macklin, and again, so Oz will be a banner. It does kind of suck that they're given the mat that they- we only have two weeks to build this match. I really wish they would have uh, not maybe hold out to Slim anniversary, but I wish they would have put um, against so Oz maybe somewhere else so that way we could have like a little bit more time. Yeah, like, like, two weeks yeah, is a bit too fair. short to build this match. Yeah, but uh, mm-hmm. there you go. Uh, I'm on the notes again, by the way. Uh, I now have to say that now. Then it shows the Against All Odds now uh, ad. I thought it was a really good ad. Impact knocks it out of the park when it comes to the pay-per-view ad. Yeah, they just they they just know how to promote it. They do know how to promote it. They have a good production team. Uh, then we had the last shot match for the uh, Knockouts Championship. It was Deanna versus Jordan oh, Grace. Man. This match was fantastic. Um, this is actually the first match I've seen them have between the two because I can never watch Impact every time they're feud. It's just I'm not destined to see this match, but uh, I finally got to see it here. This probably isn't the best match. I'd probably give give that in all fairness. It's probably the Rebellion match. Realistically, the best match they've ever had is probably the first one at Slam of Those in 2020, but there's obvious reasons why it's probably not the best match, in my opinion. I haven't seen the match, but you know why it's probably not the best match. Pandemic! Um... And then, of course, the second match was the first ever Iron Woman match where Dion Peraza and Jordan Graves went for 30 10 minutes. Yeah, this was fantastic. Uh, they really know how to put on a match with each other. This is kind of like we're destined to do this forever. Unfortunately, they're not doing this forever because Dion Peraza won, which means that Jordan Graves can't challenge for the belt as long as Dion is champion, which might not be all that long. Um, so that's cool. Um, I like this. They should turn Jordan Grace heel. It's time to turn her heel. She's done a lot, everything she can do as a baby face. And the promo she cut earlier where she said that if I can't be the best, I don't know who I am. Turning her heel, I think, makes the most sense. I think she should like go away for a while. If she, she yeah, just... if she signs with Impact again, though, you keep in mind there's reports that she's a free agent right now, and she might yeah. uh, go to AEW. Um, yeah. By the by, the end of this uh, cycle here, so they, they are highly looking into her. Well, if she do, okay, if if she resigns, they should she should come back as a heel. Um, and yeah, stuff. yeah, that I agree. Cool. Team her up with Savannah Evans and Jashelle Shaw. Have her and Savannah Evans as like your knockout yeah, that'd be, team there. That'd be cool. Yeah, Boom, the main event. Team. <laughs> the main event was brutal. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Understatement, bro. This was uh still accurate, JJ. Bro, I I, I, I was scared. <laughs> I was very scared. I'm scared just to talk about this match. This looks like a murder happened by the end of the Same. match. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dude, that's right. bro, I was so mortified. I like okay, Owen, answer me this: Did it look like like something straight out of Eddie Guerrero JBL? From yeah, it really. I was just going to say, dude, I was having Eddie Guerrero JBL flashbacks, and I was there for that match. Yeah, this was Golly. fantastic. This was awesome. Um, the fact, the biggest thing of the match I want to talk about is the fact that 
Not only did they do the staple gun spot, he stapled PCO's mouth shut. What yeah. the hell? And his like, nose at one point, I think. Yeah. Or like, supposedly, he, I think it was his nose bridge, up, but you get the visual. He had to yeah. pull out plot. He had to pull out pliers mm. to remove the staples. It was Tom I, I, Tom Hannafin. I almost called him his WWE name, but we can't do that here. Um, but the I, I think a lot of people crap on him on commentary. He really weighed this match. He was really good on commentary here. Just real, the selling he was given. Uh, Bro, because it's, it's I, not hard to do when you got two fucking guys that are legit trying to kill each other. Like, yeah, you like, know, shit. This was insane right here. Um... Yeah, this was great. Um, Macklin won, and afterwards, uh, like Scott DeMoss said he would, he put the title around his waist. And it, I really like how Impact did here. They ended it uh, to a hook to want to make you watch Impact. Bully Ray attacks Scott DeMoss, Dude, beat the crap out of him. Macklin and goes out of the ring, does not shake his hand. Bully Ray comes in, gets mm -hmm. his revenge, and in Dorses Macklin his goddamn self. Oh yeah, this was so, shit. Oh this was shit. So bad. <laughs> this was so bad. Matthew Wendwell, who's supposed to be the heel commentator, has to try to go up there and talk them down, and he fails miserably. I don't know oh, if you yeah. guys watched the. I, and then obviously he ended up getting put through a flaming table. Scott Demore, all the props in the world for him taking this bump. This dude did not take this many bumps uh, when he actually wrestled. Well, yeah, when he trained to be a wrestler, anyways, I think he's taking more bumps later in his career than earlier. Yeah, in his career. yeah. To be honest, that's a that's a um, fair assessment. This is awesome, um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to see what ha what comes of this. I'm really kind of scared for the Impact roster because it Bully Way is uh, it's gonna hurt you. And well, Bully, I well, how I about Steve Macklin? He just survived the fucking goddamn Frankenstein monster, yeah, that's the, that's and, and he was too. bleeding out uh, profusely, and he survived. Yeah. And he orchestrated an absolute beatdown of the freaking commissioner afterwards. So what do you yeah. think? And then yeah, this is just this is just fantastic. Um, I don't know if you guys watch the post shows afterwards. The post they really did a good job because usually the post shows go like a half hour. This they really did a good job saying yeah we can't do this post show but we're done. Like yeah, there was really no like post show this time. They did post impact following the fallout after impact wrestling. I watched them all the time. Yeah, okay. this was uh, this th this th this was awesome. They really. I, other, if it wasn't for United Champions, this probably would have been like the best ending of any of the shows all week. That this, this yeah, was awesome. to be honest, yeah, it was. Yeah. It, was, it would have been had it not been for the Bloodline, which we'll definitely get to. But yeah, this was uh this was fantastic. Um, I don't know what this means for Bully Way. Um, I and what they're gonna set up here and stuff. I assume when Scott DeMore can come back. I don't think he'll be in a match, but I think they're going to do like Team Bully Way versus Team... I know they did this already, but I think they'll do it again. Maybe at Impact 1000, because you can tell me why we want to build Impact 1000 as a big yeah, show. Where yeah. if Bully Ray loses, he has to leave Impact, and that will be his final hurrah. The only thing that sucks about this, I know this it has nothing to do with Impact. It doesn't really make sense that he's a baby face in NWA. Like, he should be a heel everywhere he is. I, I have that kind of... St I have that thing that, that when I talk about that, where... If a wrestler is one gimmick, he should be that gimmick. Obviously, not completely old school, but like Bully Way being a uh, this big heel um, in Impact and then being a complete babyface 180 in the NWA does not make sense. It do especially too because more people watch Impact in the NWA. It, it doesn't make sense. Like NWA should take notes here because Impact yep. Impact had the best ending and uh, it would have been awesome. Um, and by the way, and by the way, it's a perfect way that you segue that because. Well, I don't think it was on your notes. This is one of the topics I wanted to talk about and bring to the rundown is the NWA. I can't, don't, uh -oh. don't mention the Crockett Cup because I haven't been able to watch no, it. No, we ain't talking about the Crockett Cup. I'm just talking about the NWA as a whole we're going to get to. That said, uh, I think uh, everybody gave their letter grade on this or no? Uh, no we haven't I got the, there yet. No. Uh, but let's start with JJ. What would you give under C just like a letter grade and all that type of stuff? I must say a C, a solid C, just because of the lack of emotional involvement sure. in most of the angles and storylines. I'm not trying to take anything away from the matches as a whole or competitors. I just didn't have the connection to the angles and the stories as I did the rest of the week. That's fine. Noah? Uh, again, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, higher here because, of course, I have a connection because I watched it. You figure that the knockouts were involved in not one, not two, not three, but 
four capacities with the Killer Kai and Masha Slamovic's uh, angle. You had a great six way to finding the tops of Impact Wrestling and pushing some scenarios there like Frank Azaria and Eddie Edwards. You had Steve Macklin who showed us how violent his mayhem truly can be. And overall, the lowest point of the show was probably the Dirty Dangle thing, but it was during the uh, countdown, which again, I can go along with because it wasn't during the actual show itself. This was a really good thing, setting up not only into Against All Odds, which again, is literally like two weeks after it, but Slammiversary in itself. I'm going to give it a B+. I'm going to give I'm it a... Agree. I'm going to agree with uh, Noah. Um, I thought this was a great show. Uh, actually, if I think about it some more, I'm actually going to go A-, minus, mainly because the finish of the show was really strong. It really hooked people in to want to watch Impact. I thought the finish of the show was really strong. Yeah. Um, I feel like this show, what this show did the best out of all the shows is it didn't start out high, too. It slowly became like a great show. Like uh, They really did a good job of pacing with this show. I thought they did a good job. Yeah, that, so. exactly. I, I, I give it an A-, minus too. I thought this was like right up there with Resurgence, uh, but not quite. A little bit less, I thought, but it was still I thought, a minus to me. I thought this might have been a little bit better than we saw. Just think about it some more, just because. Uh, I mean, it's not New Japan's fault. The ending was really strong, so yeah, you, you, yeah. You, you remember. You always remember the ending, so so James, because I don't want to end on neg negative note. Oh, we're um, going. Oh, oh, what we're doing is we're going to a commercial break, and we're gonna come okay. back, and we're gonna talk about the problems of the NWA. Oh, best you believe I've been waiting for I mean, a goddamn really... platform to talk about the problems of the NWA. And then, right after that, we're going to go right into the Night of Champions. And I'd actually rather talk about the Night of Champions of a show I barely fucking watched. I only watched, like, one thing out of the whole fucking show <laughs> than I want to about the NW fucking A and how they fucking absolutely misused their talent. So we'll be right back. Don't close that window. The following announcement has been paid for by the Indie Force Podcast. This is podcasting like you've never seen it before. In 2019, Michael X won the Wrestling Rundown Predictions Championship, taking the wrestling world by storm. When the virus attacked, these four individuals would create a podcast to talk about the nerdiest shit on the internet, filmed in the Massachusetts underground. They talk about everything from professional wrestling, YouTube, mixed martial arts, movies, comic books, tabletop, video games, anime, social media, content creation, and everything in between. Watch the Indie Force on the Jay Hebert Studios channel now and subscribe today. The following announcement has been paid for by the Indie Force Podcast. A table from hell with the Psycho Asylum. <laughs> An Iron Man match of factorial proportions. Man. In this fight, I will melt you down to slag. Versus machine. I calculate a 0.85% chance that you will win in your current condition. All metal mayhem. Colleen Horizon. When you throw me into the wolves, I will return leading the pack. Vera McGarden. And I'll do anything to be the warrior on top. For the Athena title, best friends turn bitter rivals. Johnny Star. Don't get in the way to start or you'll get burned. James, the Ark. Angel. I'm the real star of this brand. For the international title. The outsider. Mark Young. The executioner. Michael X. For the WYW World Heavyweight title. Two out of three fall. Inside. In a hell. In, in a, a cell. cell. WYW Immortal. Now available on YouTube. The people I know more about me know this. I am just a simple man. And a lifelong fan of professional wrestling. Whether it's the Noting Two Galaxy, the Jeff Meacham Network, the ATW Crew, Indie Force, or anything related to For the Win Productions, the gears of wrestling keep on turning, and we are here to give our thoughts, previews, and predictions. Whenever there is a pay-per-view, Noah Foster is there to host. Simply Predicting. Hosting pay-per-view prediction panels since 2017.
So, James, I'm gonna let you host this post. I probably should have just had. I probably should have talked about this when we were on break. I uh, should. This is probably something that shouldn't be in the video, but it is anyways. It's the rundown, though. Yeah, everyone knows how we will. Take us through kind of the state of the NWA, because I, can, I, have, I can't really talk oh about Lord. it because I haven't been able. All right. I haven't. I have not watched NWA since Ty was on the belt, so I, so, I can't so really talk about it. So, so I'm here. I'm here to talk about it. Oh boy, am I here to talk about it? Because you know what? This is I'm gonna be dangerous. Producing, so here we go. Yep. Now. Everybody knows that I, there are people that I like in the NW of A, okay? They yeah. are Natalia Markova. They are that Odinson. They are, uh, there's a few others. I would say the Renegade uh, Twins, if you count them as a fucking part of NWA at this point. The what, the thing I liked, too, uh, when I was watching it, I really liked the junior heavyweight division. I always thought they tried to put on some good matches. Oh, I think the reason I, ho, ho. I think the reason I also said that, too... Um, is because uh, it wasn't booked by Cor well, it was obviously booked by Corgan, but the, you really can't. It's really hard to book like a bad match when it's just wrestling matches or a bad feud. So at least uh, there's that. But it's like you know, oh, whatever. You would think, you would think you'd be, you have not seen the NWA pay per view that we all was had the unfortunate displeasure of calling on the Jeff B2 Network Multiverse Media. Oh man, he's going including me. So, so yeah, take us through kind of the NWA. The, the junior that. heavyweight title is by you. You think the universal title has a bad design to it because of the fucking mustard fucking strap? Now put that fucking design on a guy that's pretending to be Austin Idol's son named Cyan. He's the champion now. Uh, that's that's the national title. I'm sorry, the national title. That's what it Fuck. feels like. He should be the junior heavyweight title. Why are you wearing a mask? Why are you doing? And it? I haven't I haven't even watched I haven't even watched NWA and I somehow knew that. You so. probably did. That's how much I've just completely fallen off with this product. Um, uh, I just respect Robert Anthony with making the gimmick work for whatever it's worth. I guess sure. Uh, Which is weird because Robert Anthony was trained by John Moxley and everything like that too. And like, yeah, having a mask, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, the the shit going on with EC3, dude never should have been rewarded with a championship after he legitimately almost damn near killed Alex Riley. Uh, that was ridiculous. <laughs> that was fucking ah. egregious. Like, it's on my face, bro. He fucking goes for the suicide dive. Oh lord! They, he cuts away and he crashes and burns. How does fucking and and then he wins? He continues the match even though it should have been stopped right then and there because you could clearly tell Riley was not all there. What the fuck did they do for Ethan Carter? To, how did they reward Ethan Carter for literally Hulk Hoganing that fucking cell of the suicide dive like Macho Man style for Riley? Oh, let's give him the championship. Let's give him the television title. Like, oh my god. And then oh. fucking uh champion. Yeah. Don't even don't even get me started, by the way. Mm -hmm. I um, I know I know you're going off, but on the fucking booking of how they both do the T V title matches, those are terrible. Yeah, those well, well they, yeah, matches. they have always been a big fucking sore point. Six or five I don't care if it's a harkens back to fucking like back in the day of the NWA. Like, dude, Come the fuck on. Sometimes I'm gonna, tradition needs to die. This doesn't I'm gonna fucking tell you, work. I'll tell you why this doesn't work, too, because I, I, I haven't been able to rant about this. Uh, th No one gets over losing a match in six minutes and five seconds. Unless you, like, that, <laughs> that, that nobody. Goes... It's nobody in the, this day and age anymore does. Like, it's a whole different time. Like, and they, wrestle, they don't even wrestle them. And if that's the case, they... I remember I saw one of the matches. I think it was Jordan Clearwater versus um, somebody else. He was going to win the match anyways, but because of that goddamn time limit, it didn't happen. And then, um, so what's the point? And I remember um, they never they never do rematches when it goes the time limit. And then they decide, they randomly decide sometimes when they want to do the TV time limit match. Like, oh, yep. this time it's not going to be the TV time yep. limit match. Then don't do it then. Like, stop doing it. Like The other issues that I have... Like are are they're vast, but like the the people that I named that are they're actually bad. great and should be pushed to the fucking forefront of the of the, uh, the division. Jr. Kratos, even though he looks mm -hmm. like a fucking smacked ass, uh, really good wrestler, right? 
Odinson, right? Mm-hmm. Natalia Markova for reasons that, which, by the way, you would think that a person that's being promoted on fucking Smashing Pumpkins World Tour should be, I don't know, in the fucking main event scene a lot more fucking often. But what do I fucking know? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Camille's title run's probably the only good thing about that as well. I I, I forgot to mention Camille in that whole thing. Uh, Camille... Uh, just waiting for Camille's name to be dropped. She is still 1X. She is 1X for a reason. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. she is the best women's... You know, we talk about Jay Cargill. Camille probably has her beat only because of how fucking good of a wrestler she has been for a while mm-hmm. now. But only yeah. due to, you know... You know, it... it Jay Cargill reigns more impactful because she had way more fucking competition and she fought more jobbers. Yeah, I I'll think of, that's... Uh, yeah, definitely. It's it's astounding to me that this company has fallen from grace so fucking hard that the guy who didn't want to do business and take the NWA title back to Turner Network Television back during the fucking pandemic didn't even want to fucking be there anymore and fucked off because they fucked around with his wife and his and her booking decisions and uh, and and there's still other booking decisions that are terrible like but and then the, the this is like when he realized he was gone when they brought in get when they made a character get the gift yeah how did that turn out for you by the way you lost your biggest star out of it yep and then look now I don't know about Tyrus because Tyrus is saying some bunch of fucking outlandish stuff on Fox News, and I'm not fucking repeating here, unless it's off the air. Uh, but I defended him as a person. But even if he was a good person, he's not a good fucking wrestler. He's just not. He's not good. We gotta concede. And then fucking Billy Corgan, you absolute fucking donut you fucking mongoloid of human being going on fucking social Damn. media and going going uh if you're not a fan of tyrus then you're not a fan of professional wrestling are you fucking kidding me really if i'm not a fan of tyrus bad knees no knees have an ass tyrus oh that i'm fucking i'm not a wrestling fan Oh, okay. I guess I'm not a. Re- I'll 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 take a quote from what Chris fucking Dodd said on AfterShock. I guess I'm not a fan of wrestling then because I don't like fucking Tyrus <laughs> on my goddamn television screen, sticking up the joint. Which, by the way, the joints have st- significantly diminished. Fucking NWA Power when it first debuted. Holy shit! Vibrancy, energy. You wanted to fucking see what was gonna happen on that fucking show, and everybody was over from the word go on the first episode. How do we go from proper filmed studio wrestling that was on an equivalent of JJ's fucking AdSense budget to where now they can't even fucking do a high school gymnasium and sell it out? And it looks like it's run by a fucking college production. I Which is not a compliment, ass. by the way. I fucking saw, and the NFL fucking Nickelodeon game was better produced than this fucking hot garbage. <laughs> and that shit was terrible. One of the worst fucking productions I've ever seen from any sport, period. And NWA somehow topped that one. <laughs> but I laughed yeah. my ass. I laughed my okay. ass. Okay. So, wow. I, 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 remember, <laughs> I remember I laughed my <laughs> ass off when... Uh, they went on like the social medias and stuff and talked about how big of a deal it was that they sold out NWA seventy like four and seventy five. Well, I don't even know what year it is. I'm so glad and you it, mentioned this. Yes. Now, but they talked about how they sold it out. I'm like, wait, the venue's not even that big anyway. So it's, it's like, not that big. big. And not to mention, not to mention Noah or Owen. Excuse me, not Noah. I'm, but I'm tired still. Look, and I'm uh, somehow, I'm, somehow I'm still awake, and I'm conscious enough to actually understand what you're saying. Anyway, continue. Now, now I understand, and it's good that they're making money because at least the people that were on that show get the fucking eat. So that's good, okay? That's great. I am happy for the talent. This is not against the talent, except EC3. Fuck him. He's a bitch. But everybody else, Damn. I like, okay? They deserve even to Even Tyrus? Yeah, even Tyrus. Uh, why not? Even though he's got fucked up knees and all, like, I just don't put him on my TV. It's fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, dude, 
UK, UK oh, should be a. Here's an, a great example of why this does not matter in hindsight for the long game. AEW sold out almost damn near sold out Wembley without CM Punk being announced, without a single fucking match being announced. They damn near sold out the arena like that. There were 20,000 seats away by the time they fucking got the tickets out. I know you don't want to talk. I know you don't want to give them the praise, but WWE has been sellout. They sold out Backlash without a match announced. They sold out Money in the Bank without a match announced. I mean, I guess the Money in the well, Bank. Well, no, 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 no. Out. Well, hang on, because international shows are naturally going to sell out. Is my point, but especially, especially in the UK, mm -hmm. they don't have wrestling much anymore. Ever since the fucking. NXT regime came through, and then yep. the NXT regime died, unfortunately. Fuck, they haven't had wrestling in ages. That's why it's a hot fucking market right now. NWA going there and selling out the fucking O2 means dick in the long yeah. scheme of things. How are you going to build off that momentum? My <laughs> survey says probably not well. Because um, you have talent there right now that you should be putting at the fucking forefront, and you're not putting them at the fucking forefront. I mean, Christ, I feel like I'm watching WWE back in 2015 when they were shoving Roman Reigns down our throat. Except at least Roman Reigns, back then, was actually fucking talented and could actually have knees. <laughs> I feel like this needs to be getting talked about because no one's going to talk about this. And I, I say this isn't that big of a deal, but I think it is a big deal. Yes. The oh, fans aren't, aren't different. I see the same fans in the crowd all the time. All the time. They don't have any new fans that come <laughs> yeah, into the studio. Right. Um, yeah, what is their studio now? Can anybody research that? Because it's, it, it's the same place as we saw the NWA pay-per-view, right? Yeah, the I think so. But like, okay. I'm just saying, like, it seems like it's that. the same people that buy the, the tickets to these shows. Like, you're not growing your fan base at all. Like, yeah. you're just not. Like, You're not. And, and I like people... And look, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. People give shit to AEW, but their fan base, no matter what you, anyone says about it, they grow their fan base. Their fan base grows. Somebody there's new some is always... Life. Oh. There's some life to the show. In Impact, there's, there's some life to the show. In New Japan, there's some life to the show. Hell, even I have a in, question. Go ahead. What's the question? How much does the NWA travel? Not all. They travel a decent amount of times. That. Okay, James said not often. Maybe big shows, Owen, they would you say they travel, travel for? Yeah, in big shows, they will travel far. I'll give them that, yeah. So so therein lies part of the problem, because if you really go back, if you look at NXT, my NXT every week from the same arena, you see the same fans. If you go back to the old TNA days at Universal or even at the Asylum, you saw the same fans. Right. So, so for NWA to be in the same studio every week, you're going to see a lot of the same fans. Yeah, They're not fair. in a tourist right. trap right. like WCW was. They're not in a tourist trap like TNA was where you're going to get that cycle of people coming to town. Yes. You're like, oh, well, here, I'm at Universal Studios. Oh, TNA's filming today. Let's go and check this out. Right. It's you're going to get the same people showing up every week. Which is fair yeah, enough, right. but I, I'll, I'll counter this point with this. Yes, you saw the same people in TNA and the Impact Zone. Yes, you saw the same people in Full Sail, and then later in the current NXT, right? Not Noah's NXT, damn it. Um, but it's better than it used to be, right, Noah? Correct. Uh, I don't think so. He's the only one, to be honest. Actually, no. No, I kind of agree. We're, we're, we're different, but it's okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's divided there. But even then, at least there's life for that even. I'd actually argue that NXT has way more fucking life in the audience than NWA Agreed. And it's, it's night and day. And here's the thing. There is no excuse why that should be the fucking case. Because NWA did this shit right with their fans when they were in the fucking soundstage at first. And mm -hmm. they first released Power. They did this shit right. Now, granted, I know the pandemic killed them. I know that Aldis didn't want to fucking play ball and didn't want to go to AEW or Impact or any other place to fucking defend the title. I get that. I understand. And they that. lost. Uh, and they lost Dave Lagana to the speaking out. And Dave Lagana. Yeah, I get all this shit happened. 
But at least fucking pretend that you're trying to give a shit, which Billy Corgan doesn't do. Like, the whole show feels lifeless. Not even just the audience now. Like, nobody gives a shit. I don't, I'm not convinced Joe Galley cares. Tim Storm is like, what the fuck? This isn't the NWA I helped grow. I, I, I bet he's embarrassed to be there half the fucking time. Bully Ray is just there for a fucking paycheck to just muddle around on commentary for most weeks. Velvet Sky has no idea what the hell's going on. I don't even know why she's in the fucking booth, but she's probably lifeless too. She probably doesn't even know what the hell's happening. Every wrestler that just is there for a paycheck is just like, ah, this is a bot show. Except for the men, men and women I just mentioned. La Rosa Negra, Natalia Markova, uh, you know, Camille, Odinson, Odinson uh, uh, the, the fuck Pope D'Angelo De Niro is on the roster, and he should be—he should have been the champ, fucking months ago, years ago. He should have been the one that you thrown out of this, in my opinion. Not mm-hmm. fucking Murdoch. I like yeah, Murdoch as a person. Don't get me wrong; he wasn't the guy. Yeah. De Niro was your guy. Aaron Stevens was your guy, and neither one of them. It's just fuck, man. Like, and now they're in the rut that they're in. And whose fault is that, you know? Like, at some point, fucking Billy Corgan's got to take some goddamn responsibility and be like, all right, clearly I'm not fucking doing this right. (laughs) Yeah, I'll end it with this, um, and then we can move on. There's two other things I want to mention. What's worse is they make their shows so irrelevant. And I say this because you'll watch the shows, then when the pay-per-view card gets announced, it's nothing that they were building on the shows. It's completely different. Are you correct? And even when they're building to a show. JJ, Noah, what was my exact quote to you guys when I saw the go-home show for what that train wreck of a fucking pay-per-view was? Do you remember what, exactly what I said? I don't. Uh, the, I don't the know. So. Worst go-home ever something. Exactly thing. that. You, you're pretty close. Something, something Cody worst, Rhodes. <laughs> something, something Cody Rhodes. Worst go-home show of any wrestling product. I have ever seen, period. Wow. And I have, I, watch it. I have seen bad nitros. I've seen some pretty shitty Hogan and Bischoff era impacts. I've seen the Thunderdome era, the fucking pandemic era. I've seen the worst of the worst of Vince McMahon booking. If I'm saying that this shit is the worst, even over WWF 95, because I'm a fucking historian, by the way. Yeah. That says a lot about now, how now, bad of a state Even over in. Vince Russo WCW 2000, bro. bro I'd at bro, least take, bro, I will take, bro. I will take Russo's, bro, and I'll tell you no. why, bro, because at least his shit's fucking funny. It's so bad, it's good that at least it's fucking entertaining. Can you, so, without going, because I don't know what the show was like, Without going through it through in depthly, um, give me kind of with maybe like three words. Give me kind of like what it was like type of thing. Absolute horseshit. Okay. Um, that works. And then I'll, I'll end up with this. I think the reason I'm kind of mad about this because Billy Corgan's talked about this before. Like he's not going to lose any money out of this and all that type of stuff. So you know, he this is a this is just like a hot. Nick Aldis actually said this. It wasn't Billy Corgan on Sam Law, but it's then this is a hobby to him. Um, yep. You know he he doesn't get hurt, but the wrestlers. If this if the if, if the NWA like ever close and it, if it doesn't do well, the wrestlers the, the wrestlers, the wrestlers suffer. lose a place to work, and that's what pisses me off because it doesn't need to be that way. It doesn't need need to be close to that way. Mm-hmm. Like this is a I have so much money that it's not hard to book, but I don't feel like booking, but I can finance yeah. it. Like this, this is the ass backwards method of what Jeff always fucking preaches. It's not it ain't hard to book. It's hard to finance. Well, this is just I can finance it, and I could yeah. book it, but I don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not good. Um, yeah, that's that's my thing. And again, I I don't I don't have a problem with any of the men and women again except EC three for the reasons I mentioned. Fuck what you did to Alex Riley. That was bullshit. Um. But otherwise, everything else, I, I, I'm I cool with everybody else. Um, I am upset for the men and women that are on that roster or a part of spot shows for them 
because I've seen them do much better elsewhere, and they should be utilized as proper talents. I, I think yeah, we can I, all agree on this. <laughs> I'll give an example. Uh, Kratos, when you see him on yeah. New Japan, it's oh completely different. Fuck, it's completely he's different. Awesome, he's awesome in New Japan. Noah, you can confirm this. You have seen more J.R. Kratos on New Japan than we have, more than likely. By the way, there's a, uh, before Noah, can you confirm that before we? Uh, before yes, we he uh, as he's been part of NJBW Strong and of course competes for Team Filthy. There's one other wrestler, by the way, James. You probably have seen him in NWA, and you think he sucks. He's actually really good, and he's been in New Japan. Jordan Clearwater in New Japan is awesome in New Japan. Mm -hmm. Like he's really going good. and freaking strong. He was involved in Resurgence uh, 2021. Actually, I'll take yeah, your word for it. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Hell, I, for all I know, the fucking dude in the mustard-colored attire, Cyan's probably like the best wrestler I've ever seen, and you wouldn't know it because of how they well, fucking book him. James, yes, Robert he, Anthony, AEW, yeah, it's Robert Anthony. Yeah, oh yeah. John Moxley. Oh yeah, you're right. So yeah, no, my my point stands, and it's a fact actually. <laughs> <laughs> let's go pot. Let's get back to the positives though. Uh, yeah. I think we kind of well, JJ and Noah. Is there anything else you want to say before we uh, move on to some positivity about uh, the NWA? I really have I really have nothing to say about NWA. The only thing I wanted to throw out there is going back to the NXT comment that I made Owen that you kind of disputed when I said but it's better than it used to be when me and Noah say that we're not referencing the black and gold we're saying that the current product is better than the rainbow bright 2.0 bullshit <laughs> so. I don't know I don't know that there was some bait there was I actually liked I didn't love it but I actually prefer that because uh Ever since, not ever since it switched, but NXT, I, I really don't enjoy NXT every week. I, I, and, and James can attest to this. I, I, I try my damnedest every week to enjoy NXT. Um, I cover it for the WWE Aftershock, and I try my damnedest to enjoy NXT. I like the specials. I'll admit the specials always deliver, but the weekly TV show of NXT is not. Uh, other than this week and like maybe the build up to Battleground, go watch WWE Aftershock like Mania weekend, not even Mania weekend from the Rumble all the way to Mania. That's like the worst I think NXT has ever been. It's it was really bad. It's really bad. Uh, yeah, like, Shawn Michaels is not. Uh, I will say there are there are moments where he's brilliant. There are moments of mm -hmm. brilliance in Michaels' booking, and then when it's bad. Oh, Boy, is it like when he ran his promotion in Texas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just saying, I get... it didn't survive. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, Noah, anything else you want to say about the NWA uh, that we are, that we haven't said? Uh, respect the hardworking young men and women that are there just trying to get a paycheck, and hopefully things work out for the best, and bigger and brighter things come for them, including about limited to Camille, Kenzie Page, Manny Wazowski, yep. Otis and J.R. Kratos, and others. I agree. Absolutely agree. Uh, positivity! Night of Champions! I can't believe I'm saying WWE is more of a positive fucking topic. That's a first. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, JJ, hey, JJ timestamp that. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to clip J that into yeah, the James, end of the year that. for open mic night. Yeah. <laughs> so, JJ, I'll let you start. Uh, like before, what did you think of Night of Champions as a pay per view and everything? Like, well, pre pre live event, not a pay per view. Damn, it, work it, it's okay. I'm still so programmed to saying pay per views. It slips with me too, Owen. I thought Night of Champions was an amazing show. You know, we. We at the multiverse and the extended multiverse have really dismissed the Saudi shows for a long time. Yeah. To to the point where they were referred to as what, Noah? Uh, they were referred to as... But I would say that within the past year, they've really really stepped their game up over there and a lot of that probably has to do with the triple h takeover if you will yeah yeah but this show start to finish with the exception of one match in particular and i know owen has no clue what i'm talking about but the rest of you guys know because i've ranted and raved about it a few times Verbatim. The, the rhea ripley natalia match Oh, okay. That's not even the match I was thinking of. But every single match on that show performed 
delivered and was rewatch worthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, James, that, I, that Natalia match really turned me off, and that's only because of my personal adoration for Natalia. That's yeah. fair. Like, I love that girl to death. I love mommy too. Don't get me wrong. She, she, it is her time, her moment, but they did Natalia no favors in that match. So I, I love mommy too. Um, the match I thought you were talking about that really didn't do anything for me. I liked the match. I just thought it was really disappointing. It was Bianca Belair versus Oscar. Something didn't feel right about that match. Something kind of felt off to me about that match. Um, I felt like the crowd wasn't into it. It felt like they were kind of messing up some spots along the way. I feel like they just couldn't really rekindle the magic that they had at WrestleMania. The reason I didn't have an issue with the Natalia match, I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, we are having a competitive match with Natty isn't going to do any favors for Rhea. She really should be a dominant wrestler. And, you know, mm. Rhea uh, did just that. Because um, really, there was no chance that Natty was going to win the match anyway. So I'm like, you know, why kind of waste the time? Let's just have Rhea get over. I think Rhea got over way more by squashing Natty than she would have been. Plus, you got to know, by the way, it's WWE. I know it's a different era and everything like that. They love to embarrass people on their birthdays and in their hometown. So that's why I kind of, I didn't laugh at it necessarily, but it's just such a WWE thing to do yeah, to but, embarrass no, people. No, but Vince McMahon but... is not having any creative influence on the product, right? <laughs> right? Well, uh, well, well he made... Well, I was kind of well, I proved that, uh, but oh um, it wasn't a bad show. It's just he made a he made a correction that affected the show and that type of thing. But, ah, that's true. Um, that's true. But yeah, that's why I didn't have an issue with the Via Natalia match. They could do something here, by the way. This is why when Natalia does the Mickey James storyline, the Ric Flair storyline back in the day, where Natalia loses, starts losing matches, Ooh. and she ha- has a final run where she says, "If I lose another match." I'm leaving the company type of thing. JJ, I'm leaving I, the company. I, JJ, I think you mentioned this on Open Mic Die, right? This was like a fantasy booking idea of yours. Oh, yeah, something along those lines, yeah. Oh, we're thinking here, JJ. We have the... I mean, I don't think we're I mean, completely in sync, but... Um, it, it just... I feel like Natalia is the type of competitor that, by having a knockdown drag out with Mommy you kind of really make Rhea Ripley prove that she's deserving of that title. That's fair. You know, you want to do a two, three minute squash match. And you save that shit for Emma. You save that shit for Dana Brooke. You know, you save that shit for those type of talents. Natalia is the longest tenured female on the roster. You yeah. don't do her that kind of dirty. No. But think of Think about that. I'm not. I don't want to compare the matches. Think about what the Brock Lesnar squash match with John Cena did for him. He was elevated wow. and made him like the biggest beast to in be, WWE. Uh, Rhea Ripley. That, I mean, it's not gonna. For it, it reasons be that, low. that shouldn't have happened, but I won't fucking say on the air. <laughs> Rhea Ripley. I think when that happened, I'm like, wow. Rhea Ripley dominated. Plus, at least by the way. Uh, Natalia had a distraction that happened, so at least it wasn't like she completely outclassed Natalia. There was at least a distraction from Dominic that uh, okay. at least allowed that to happen. Okay, but then what does that say for Rhea that she came out there and she squashed Natalia with a distraction from Dominic, but then when she has her next title match, whether it's on Raw or SmackDown or on a PLE and she has to go against an Emma and she has to take 10 or 15 minutes to defeat her, Ooh, what does that yeah. say for Rhea then? Yes. Well, we'll have that conversation if that you, happens. You defeated you defeated Natalia in under three minutes, but this other chick that's a nothing at the end of the day. Again, no disrespect to them for their own skills, but it took you that long to defeat one of them. Yeah, why didn't you? Yeah, that, like your that, that they'd run into an issue there, and since it hasn't happened yet, we can't really have that conversation. I will kind of I will say BS if that does happen. Selena Vega, I could understand if you say that with her, like, why did it take Selena Vega? At least Selena Vega had, like, the hometown crowd and everything like that, and she was filled up with adrenaline. So I could kind of understand that one, why it kind of struggled, because Selena Vega, and she also underestimated Selena Vega and all that type of stuff. 
Um, yeah, it would be that we could have that conversation. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. What do you? Uh, but let's move on, James. What do, I know you only saw the one thing from Night of Champions, but what hearing about Night of Champions and all that type of stuff? What did you think? What do you think? Well, I mean, first, I, I know, first, I will say, as far as the whole event goes, I will give it a D for did not watch. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I did watch uh, the ending, which was the most interesting part of the show because it looks like Roman had some trouble in paradise. Hi, Kofi. How you doing? Uh, whereas Jimmy Uso, of all people, super kicked Roman because of what how he's been treating Jay Uso, mm-hmm. which was some boo shit. And I thought, all right. Uh, this is interesting. I enjoy this, and I think it's really cool that Jimmy and Jay are kind of in this prominent-ass role. It's really good. So, yeah, that was good, and I really enjoyed that. I thought it was the best ending out of all the pay-per-views all weekend. So, see? I'm not totally biased, people. Noah, what about you? What do you say about, uh, Night of Champions? Uh, for a show in Saudi Arabia, they are definitely doing more to push, uh, narratives, which I can appreciate, and honestly... Besides that ending, a lot of it was pretty uh, farmed in. I mean, at this point, Bianca Belair, she's been mentally stressed by the reception of the fans. So they had to do something different. The way Asuka won, not using the mist directly in the face, but indirectly through her fingers to Bianca's eyes, I thought was a clever way to really outsmart the EST. Besides that, the rest of the show was kind of like, Okay, it was there in the afternoon, but also I am also going off the 24 hours of no sleep and I was just still take on this. It's a pretty uh, decent show, and again, the Rhea thing, I was like, why was this even on the card? Okay, That's so fail. That was a thing. And at the end of the day, the brands aren't still identified, and the biggest thing to come out of champions that everybody talks about is not Seth Rollins winning that title, it's the bloodline. If it wasn't for the mm-hmm. bloodline, I feel this show would have been pretty much... You know, even below adequate at best because everyone knew what the opening match was going to be or what the closing match should have been. And then they farmed in multiple main events just to make everybody feel bigger than what WWE actually thinks they are. Let's just call it what it is. The Cody Rhodes idea of him falling yet surviving Brock in defeat I thought was a cool angle too to continue that. And Trish Stratus, a uh, decent show, but that match felt pretty slow to me. It was an adequate show. It wasn't terrible. And compared to other country adapted shows, and I'm saying Saudi Arabia at this point, I say it's the better Saudi Arabia show I've seen at this point. I'll be nice and give it a solid B. Um, I'll talk about, yeah, the thing I really like is you definitely, if you watch it, if you go back and we might do a retro on it someday, the first Saudi show compared to this. I talked about this on Aftershock. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it here because then it starts to get real political. It does feel like the culture, maybe it's just them pretending because they're on a big stage now, is a little different than back in 2018. It feels like there's just something, a change in the air now when they go over there. It was still so real to see Sami Zayn travel. Um, apparently now it's come out that Sami Zayn um, never really had the issues that had been speculated. Sami Zayn just chose not to go to Saudi, which is fair enough. But apparently like him, like... You know, the whole thing about this and that wasn't a thing. But um, now he did. Uh, a lot of people call that hypocritical, but it is what it is. I know Cody, a lot of people called him a hypocrite for going to Saudi, considering the fact that when he was uh, not in WWE and AEW, he pretty much bashed WWE for doing business with Saudi. Now here he is going to Saudi. Look, it is what it is. It kind of is. I don't want to get into that. Um, but, Yeah. The culture, when WWE goes over there, it does feel different. But I'll go through the show. They had a media event before the show. It was the day before. That was really good. You really got to watch this. I really like that WWE has jumped on board now with yeah, New Japan I, and which by, doing these. For the record, by the way, since you have covered this to death on Aftershock, just cover the uh, media show and then whatever the post scrum was. Yeah, it was just really good. Uh, the show... It, uh, the the world title match really delivered. It opened the show. It was AJ Styles and uh, Seth Rollins. Yeah. This was great stuff. Uh, it's about the type of match you would have expected them to have. I thought they put on a great performance here. Mm-hmm. Seth went and it was obviously a foregone conclusion. Uh, but there was enough stuff they put in there that made it look like AJ could have won this match. But it was obviously always going to be Seth. Yeah. Um, but this was great stuff. They both put on their working boots. 
AJ Styles has really proven that he can still go. Because I recently, before this match, like saw him wrestle in his uh, early days. I say early days, but it was all five and Unbreakable. And yeah, he can't do a lot of the stuff that he did in Unbreakable and stuff. He showed that he could still go at a high, at a different level and all that type of stuff. So, uh, so that was this was a great match. I liked Becky versus Trish. I thought that was very good. Um, I get they want to continue this, but I talked about this on Aftershock today. I think they're kind of making a mistake continuing this. I think they should have had Becky just win. I get they want to do this dramatic, but they're really missing an opportunity to, to do Becky versus Rhea in the UK because that would easily sell out the show if they if they booked that match. Yeah. And I think they're making a mistake Actually, not doing yeah. that match. Ooh. Um, yeah, that would sell out. Mustafa Ali versus Walter I thought was really good. I really liked how they structured that match. They gave Mustafa Ali like a hope spot and everything like that, but at the end it was just Walter destroying uh, Mustafa Ali and everything like that. Um, so I really like how they structured that. The only critique I'll give is they sh the world title match and the IC title match probably should have switched places on this show, or the Wild Woman title match. Because the World Heavyweight Championship, I talk about this, is already a bit of a struggle because the WWE didn't introduce it the best, and they've already kind of made it look like a secondary belt. It doesn't help the fact that they had to kick the show, show off. I know Chris Dodd, he didn't disagree with me necessarily, but he said it's good. Um, sometimes the, the first match on the show is a high spot, and I do agree with that, but it's a world title. It's the crown the first world champion. It should have. It didn't need to main event the show, considering what ended up main evented, but it should have gone on a little later, I thought. Um, the Raw Women's title match and SmackDown Women's title matches we already talked about. Cody versus Brock I really liked. I'm an, I'm an, I'll say it one more time, and I'm not going to say it anymore. There's been fans that have complained that Bo Cody... Survived the Kamal lock as long as he did, and if it was UFC, he wouldn't have. If you remember the turn to the storyline, his arm was already broken in kayfabe, so the other point does not stand there. And when you say you don't pass out for the Kamala, if you watch the match, he, he took two F out. Huh? He passed out from the Kamala, didn't he? You did, but if you watch the match, I don't necessarily think he was out from the Kamala. I think he was out from the two F5s he took ahead of time. He was already out on his feet anyways, so stop talking about that because it's not valid. Um, so, Fair yeah, I'm really, I'm sounding like Chris Dodd here, really grouchy at everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, Why are you grouchy? Goddamn. I just say, I, I, I just hate it when people say that. Like, there's a lot of UFC fans who just watch UFC. Like, if this guy faced this guy in real life, they get destroyed. Like, it doesn't help the business. I hate it when people say that. Um, so, have fun with wrestling. Just watch wrestling for wrestling. I mean, Chris, the problem is, James, some people don't know how to do that. That's why we live in the culture that we do. Yeah, Look, I... Fair. This is going to sound weird because we just talked about it. Chris Saad said it best. Wrestling doesn't always make sense sometimes. You have to it's live in... not supposed to. Yeah. I know it's it sounds weird to. we're saying that because then we're going to say, well, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Sometimes wrestling just isn't going to make sense. You have to kind of... Deal with it. Yeah. Accept it. Embrace <laughs> it. Adapt to it. It's nothing different than going to a movie, for real. It's just suspension of your belief and being entertained for two, three hours. Yeah, like a, yeah. Giant trans like a giant Transformer saves a couple that still kisses in the end in its arm. For real. Then, yeah. then the main event, uh, I was going to say not the show, but the Chris, is, Chris isn't here, so I can't say that. Um, but, uh, yeah, this was great, this main event here. Uh, I don't know if it was my favorite match of the weekend, but it was my favorite ending of the weekend. I really like that they did this. This really just proves right here how unselfish and the Roman Reigns is the most unselfish top guy I've ever seen in the industry because yep. you tell me John Cena, Kevin Nash slash Diesel, Hulk Hogan would not have put have put them have booked this match and stuff like that. They would not have allowed themselves to go into this tag title match. Maybe Cena would have, but I feel like he would have been talked out of it. Um, but um, they would not have gone into a tag title match being like, you know, I got to defend the belt. I have a champion, but they would not have gone into this tag title match. And they, and not win the match. And he actually looked vulnerable here. And I really liked this yeah. a lot. And I what well, the thing I like to boast about this is Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are the only ones, I think, you could correct me if I'm wrong, that got into a feud with the bloodline and actually won the feud. Like, you would, like this was insane. Um, I talked about this in the retro when I talked about the day Roman Reigns won the championship. By the way, I have my uh, Discord open if you guys have to raise your hand and all that type of stuff. So I'll see it. Um, but um, Roman Reigns, I think Michael Cole every week talks about how he hasn't been pinned since 2019. I think this is a bigger accomplishment. 
How does someone not get pinned for that one, but somehow still puts over the people that he feuds with in that time? That's a huge. It ass is. Of it is a very. I th- that that's a very good point. I actually wish I said that on uh, open mic night. To be fair, I said it. On, I've been saying it all week. Like Roman Reigns, um, really is unselfish, and I think. Uh, yeah. A lot of people give him crap with his title reign and everything like that, which is fair enough. But if you really map it down, Roman Reigns' title reign has done a huge thing for an industry. He rather, he does he does wrestle and defend the title a lot more people than I think a lot of people give him credit for. Yeah. Um, he's we've been, we've been talking about it on Open Mic Night too, JJ. Like he's, you know how how unselfish he's been and how like mm-hmm. how much he's elevated people as well. So verbatim. Yeah. I mean, it's, all you've really got to do is look at Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, really. I mean, yeah. yeah, you can rattle off a laundry list of other talents, but cut and dry, exhibit A, really have to look no further. Look at Sami Zayn. Yeah. Where was he WrestleMania last year? In a mm-hmm. comedy match with Johnny Knoxville, getting smacked around by an oversized hand and pinned in the middle of the ring. Where was he at WrestleMania this year? Mm-hmm. One month removed after challenging Roman Reigns for the title in his home country where you thought he actually might win. Main event of night one at WrestleMania, taking the straps from the Usos, just 30 minutes away from the venue and building that helped make him a star. Yeah. yeah. Rocking that company's logo on his tights. Which was mm-hmm. awesome, by the way. That was yeah. so cool. And there's been reports recently that's come out that apparently some of this is Vince. Vince picks the opponents, and Roman uh, no likes way. the stories. There's no way Vince I picks just don't... the opponents here. Uh, when it comes to Sammy, no way he picked him. No way. Yeah. <laughs> that was just that Thank was you, just James. the thing that happened uh, as time went on. I have to say, I have to say this. I just really can't believe this was Vince. I just can't. I tried. I I, I tried to give Vince his due, but there's just no way. The Sammy storyline can't be Vince. It just can't be. No, like, Sa- Sammy was was a Roman call, and Hunter helped facilitate it. There's no way that was a Vince. Because yeah. cause Vince has always struggled to kind of relate to Sammy. I think. Mm-hmm. And if you and, remember, you know. It was reported back in the fall they were going to end the Sammy bit. I think it took Roman and Triple H to push in to make it stay, stick around. And if you remember, too, by the way, right before Tri- Triple H took over, they were yes, Sammy was doing stuff with the bloodline, but it was nothing big. Like, it was right before Tri- – like, he, like, they didn't start doing stuff together until um, Triple H took over. So, Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, cause, yeah, we did talk about that, too, because they really started picking that up once Triple H took over the creative reigns. Yeah. Yeah, but that's Night of Champions. I thought I know I didn't go to it too indefinitely, but I've t- I've done that already. I thought the show was fantastic. I gave it an A minus. Uh, it was really awesome. Um, a minus for me. Uh, yeah, just from what you guys are to, saying. Damn. To be fair, to be fair, I also hadn't watched. I went on vacation and hadn't watched much wrestling before then, so I might have been pumped up on a dress and be like, "Yes, I can watch wrestling again." So. <laughs> 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 yes, that's weird to... wrestling. You're like Noah, man. I swear, you guys are just alike. Yeah. <laughs> he likes wrestling. You like wrestling. You gotta, you gotta do like a wrestling slumber party one day. <laughs> uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe it'd be tough. It, it would um, be tough. Uh, you, you guys are on different sides of the country or on the East Coast. Um, we're gonna throw to a... one more ad break before we continue with the next thing. We gotta yeah. do letter grades first. I know Noah God gave his. Oh, uh, do. do... Did we do the? Did you? No, everybody the, did their letter grades. JJ, did you? I do did yours? not give it a letter grade. No. Go for it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give this one an A minus, despite the um, Natalia match, and despite the fact that I feel like they shouldn't have pulled the trigger on Oscar Kana just just yet. I think everything else was great all the way around. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It was a good show. Uh, And with that said, that wraps up Night of Champions. When we come back, we got two shows left, and we never have to talk about them again after this. And we'll probably, uh, Noah, for the, uh, Owen, for the record, we're going to probably just like uh, speed run through it and not give a synopsis, really, because we're not, we're going to be pressed for time otherwise. But uh, we are going to be covering uh, AEW Double or Nothing, what our favorite bits were. Uh, same thing with NXT Battleground, and then that pretty much solves that, 
And then our final topic will be CM Punk. He's confirmed. AEW Collision. We'll be right back. Don't close that window, people. Online entertainment. NoDQ.com. 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 Do you think you have what it takes to cut the greatest promo in professional wrestling history? Step through the ropes, pick a gimmick, and know your role. The Ring Scoops Wrestling Card Game is the ultimate pro wrestling fan party game. Draw cards at random, use your creativity, and cut a promo on your opponent while the audience cheers. The Ring Scoops Card Game, available now. So now we're going to cover NXT Battleground. Welcome back. Um, uh, this time around, because we're crunched with time, I'll go over the highlights real quick. Uh, the, be- the the best match of the show was Dijak versus Dragunov. That Hell was, yes! That was, uh, it did feel like uh, every show was trying to outdo each other, like, when it came to the extreme steps, like NXT Battleground, uh, Impact, and uh, Resurgence, and then eventually, uh, you know, a W W left it with Anarchy and the Arena were all trying to have this like hardcore match type of thing. So I, I thought uh, it really would. Um, and then the Triple Threat North American Title match was great. I thought Joe Gacy wasn't necessarily the standout of the match, but I thought he finally put his working boots on and actually had a quality match. Um, I liked the Heritage Cup match. I don't like the Heritage Cup rules. I know it's an unpopular take. I just think they really limit the matches. But other than that, I thought the match itself yeah. was good enough. I didn't like the finish too much, but um, because it did make sense because Noam Da was already like, he would have got to retain his belt whether they interfered or not. So it didn't really make sense. Um, the tag title match was g- really good. I didn't like the finish of that match either. The women's title match I didn't like. They really went with a bad result, but I'm not going to repeat that. That was just really not good. The t- NXT title match was the best match. 
was probably the second best match on the show. It was really great stuff. And I like the fact that they WWE finally had the hometown guy win in the hometown because they had done that three times and didn't do that. So. Yeah, shout out my Boston, Boston native, baby. Carmelo Hayes. Really good show. I would probably give this show like a solid B. What really brought, what really brought this show down was Tiffany Stratton winning the belt. Had that not happened, um, I think uh, uh, the show okay. would have been... Go ahead. I, I have my ha- I have my hand up. I I completely have to disagree with you, bro. Uh oh. And 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 I'm not trying to be argumentative or nothing, but like Tiffany Stratton, specifically over the course of the last six months, but definitely ever since I started watching about a year ago, has just impressed and improved by leaps and bounds. You could see this groundswell coming for the last few months, in my opinion. I honestly, and Noah can vouch for this, when we did predictions for Stand and Deliver, I predicted her to get the belt in the the ladder match because everything had been kind of pushing towards her comeuppance. Indy Hartwell got it. That's great. She got her moment, longest tenured NXT female, blah, blah, blah. But then she got drafted like two weeks later. So what the hell was the point? This was course correction. This was putting the belt where it needed to be in the first place. Tiffany Stratton was the right call. Considering the fact that they didn't structure the brackets to have, oh, I don't know, Roxy versus Cora in the finals. Mm -hmm. Considering the fact that they didn't structure structure the brackets to have, oh, I don't know, Gigi versus JC in the finals. Mm -hmm. This was absolutely the right decision. Yeah. That's fair, actually. At I least, will, at least is... for the short term, because we're now going to have a battle royal this coming week on NXT, oh. or it's already happened based on when this goes up. I'm not really sure when it's it, getting posted. It, it's going but, up on Monday. <laughs> but okay, so we're going to have a battle royal tomorrow to see who the challenger is more than likely going to be at Great American Bash, and. Granted, that person could be the one to dethrone Tiffany, and it could be a very short term thing, but. I'm almost willing to bet, granted, I wasn't watching my NXT when Mandy Rose first got the title, but I'd almost be willing to bet a lot of people said the same thing when Mandy got it. And look at what she did with the belt. Well, okay, but the difference is that Mandy was good on the microphone and she had that going for her. Anytime I fucking hear Tiffany Stratton, it's like, go away. It's like nails on a chalkboard, go away heat for me. Which, by the way, no, Owen, should I do my impression of Tiffany? Please no. Please no. I'm doing it. You can't stop Damn. me. <laughs> no one has my style, and no one has my finesse. <laughs> you can see why I said no, right, Noah? But, you can see. But, but at the same time, her, her voice notwithstanding, she's already got the marketing down, because Tiffany Epiphany and Tiffy Time oh, are I two... Over things right now. No, I hate it. I hate it. I, I understand you hate it, James, but look at it from oh, the boy. business aspect of things. I hate to, That's I hate, marketing. I hate to tell you, and James. I've said I've said it since I came back into this. I'm trying to look at things more from a business standpoint. Tiffany Stratton is the way to go right now. Okay, go ahead, Owen. Whether whether Gigi's oh, the one to dethrone ahead, her or not, but yeah. she's the way to go right now. Uh, I, I mean, to, fair enough, but fuck. I hate to tell you because JJ may be on to something. Not that I agree with him necessarily, but she, for some strange reason, she was fairly over at Battleground. I don't know why, but she was fairly over at Battleground. Oh. I'd hate to say it, but oh. it, it did happen. I, think, that it, I uh, think it's just that the NXT crowd really appreciates when the talent puts over puts in the work to improve themselves. And you go back and you watch Tiffany Stratton a year ago. As a ring, and you watch that yeah, match with Lyra there. Valkyria, and it's two completely different matches. Yeah, I'll, as a ring wrestler, I'll give you that. I'll give mm-hmm. you that. But man, I, I am not a fan of the character. I'm never going to be a fan of the character. Yeah, I don't think I will be either. Maybe just, I'm just maybe waiting to... for her to get drafted and put with the Karens. That yeah, would be the, I that, like that would that would be the only way it would work. Because, like, yeah. this is... Uh, right now, it's go away heat for me. It's like a main act. I don't know. It just doesn't yeah. scream uh, main but, uh, eventer. But everybody else, uh, 
quickly. Noah, what would you give NXT Battleground as a letter grade? Like I always say, I don't watch NXT Weekly, but it is better than it used to be. And the fact they have more going on for their women's division than the entire main roster of WWE speaks volumes for what Shawn Michaels is trying to do. Overall, mm -hmm. Battleground, it uh, wasn't a uh, bad show. There were definitely some angles, and I'm like, why did this happen? I fucking hate TikTok reject group with Noah and Dar that has really tarnished what the Heritage Cup is supposed to stand for, and I stand by that. But overall, Dijak needed Dragon off. It literally took me back to what NXT truly was about, and that was TakeOver. The rest of the show was decent, too, and Lyra Valkyria, who I picked for the ladder match, actually. Lyra and Tiffany had quite a competitive match back and forth, and Lyra really worked, really sold the knee while Tiffany worked over the knee. Tiffany showed me quite a lot in the ring. Carried her aside, because I could care less about California girl Beverly Hills 90210 <laughs> wannabe star. It was, uh, overall, a pretty uh, decent show, and I feel like we finally closed the book with uh, Braun and Carmelo. It's a solid B-plus for me. JJ, letter, final letter grade for NXT. I'm I'm torn between A minus B plus, right in that general vicinity, right there. James, D for did not watch. To be fair, there you go. So now we have uh, double or nothing. Going through the highlights real quick. Um, the biggest thing, obviously, was the two main matches really delivered the Pinnacle Fatal Four Way and Anarchy and the Arena. They were like five star matches. They were excellent for both two different reasons. Um, I get why they ended main evented Anarchy in the arena, but I really wish they would have uh, set that statement and had their guys main event the guy that had been building the company all that time. But I get why they main evented Anarchy in the arena because obviously I don't know if uh, the Pinnacle might have struggled to uh, not the Pinnacle the Pillows might have struggled to uh, uh, you know deliver to follow it up and everything like that. Um, Biggest disappointment was the AEW Women's World Title match. Yeah. It obviously had to. It obviously had to happen that way because apparently Jamie Hayter's working hurt. But it really sucks because uh, I saw the, those two put on a banner at full gear, and I really was hoping they were going to have a better match here. But that was not the case. I get what they're going to do though, because they probably want Jamie Hayter to be like a challenger and basically do the Cody story that they're going to do in um, AEW, where she chases the belt, and that makes sense. But All I really don't like the yeah. way. I really don't yeah. like what they. I really don't like what they did here, um, and it really disappointed me. It was probably the worst match of the whole weekend. I thought um, the tag title match was good. I really didn't like what they were doing with Mark Briscoe and stuff. I really wish was they would have had a tag match, but um, and I think JJ probably feels the same way, considering the fact that this made him have to do karaoke. Um, but. Uh, I didn't. I feel like I've seen better tag title matches on the pay per views. I really wish FTR could have faced like a more real team. I, I guess Jay Lethal and Jeff are a real team, but I wish they could have faced like the like acclaimed or something. But I thought this yeah. was a good, so pretty good tag match. I was really disappointed by Adam Cole, Chris Jericho. I thought the match was still good, but it didn't really feel like an unsanctioned match. I've seen way better lights out unsanctioned matches. Um, the finish was really disappointing, and it doesn't really make sense to do that finish because they did a rematch anyways. Like, this felt like a blow-off, and then they, they did a rematch. It doesn't really make sense. I don't really get why they stopped an unsanctioned match. I've seen way worse things happen in an unsanctioned match here. Yeah. And they like, and, and, and AW, it's weird because they it's like they knew they were going to get this reaction because they legitimately had commentary. It says, hey, it's not going to make people happy. So it's like, why'd you book this finish for them? Um, and then I really liked the Battle Royal. The thing that sucked about the Battle Royal was a lot of guys could have had better, like could have had more prominent spots on the show. Uh, but I liked the Battle Royal. I think Orange Cassidy is really tearing it up with the international belt. Uh, but I really liked how they further feuds in the Battle Royal. But and uh, I really liked that they had Orange Cassidy win. Um, the only thing I would say is I think they should have uh, flopped the uh, Final Four. I think Jay White should have been in the Final Four instead of. Uh, Big Bale, I almost called him his other name and made that mistake, but he can't do that here. Now I'm destined to it forever now since I already told him that. Um, but yeah, I, I will. I, I will. But yeah, I liked the Battle Royal. I thought Swerve Strickland was the standout of the Battle Royal. I thought he was really good. I kind of hope they give him a future shot at the belt. He, he's the guy that takes the belt off of uh, Orange Cassidy. Uh, I liked the TBS Women's Title match. I thought that was, uh, you know, that really lived up to expectations. Um, the thing that sucked about it was I didn't think that uh, Tyoff should have hit a finisher. It really didn't make sense that they built up the, you know, they took the finisher away the first time and then she hit it here and it was still kicked out of. That didn't really make sense. And then 
Jay Cargo follows it up and hits her version of it, and it somehow put away Ty Valkyrie with like with one move that really that was really bad. Yeah, I, I liked agree. obviously I liked the return of Chris Statlander. That made all the sense in the world because of J- of all their history together and all that type of stuff. And it was probably the best way that Jay Cargo could have lost was in a squash like that, and there's still BS around it. I hear she's possibly leaving the company. Um, but if they did bring her back, there's a reason to do a rematch. And I think it's better than like Britt Baker taking the title off her. I don't necessarily have anything, I guess, against Britt Baker though, but there's really but that's not an accolade Britt Baker I don't think really needed, so that was good. I liked the ladder match. I think that's the last match and the, uh there's one more match, but I liked the ladder match. I thought the ladder match was good. I just don't think it's a match that really fit Wardlow's uh style. I don't really think it should have been a ladder match. Uh, but it did remind me of those old classic ladder match where it's not spot match, it's very story heavy, so I liked that. I'm really disappointed with what happened with Wardlow though. I remember this dude was like really over last year. He's still yeah. over, but it's not what it's not really what it should have been. Yeah. And the last match is the uh the trios title match, the tag t- the trios match with the open house rules and all that type of stuff. I really like the open house rules like concept. I think that's a great idea. I thought this match really stood out. I liked the way it was filmed and everything like that. And I'm really liking the House of Black as a trios. And I like the team that they chose. I like the fact that uh, you know, the acclaimed and Billy Gunn didn't do dealer's choice. I thought that was good. Um, and I really liked this trios match. I thought they could have used the step a little bit more. Um, but I really liked the trios match here. I thought it was kind of like a sleeper match on the show. Uh, if I had to give uh, Double or Nothing a letter grade, I really hate to say this because I'm going to sound like the biggest AEW hater. Um, I thought it was the worst show. Now, let, let me be clear. I try not to be an AEW hater. I always try to go into every wrestling show with an open mind, hoping that it's going to be good. James knows this. Yes, I've um, seen this many but times. This may, it could have been two. I watched three wrestling shows yesterday. And D- D- Double or Nothing was the last show I watched out of the three, so I was probably fatigued. But I thought AEW Double or Nothing really could have delivered a lot more, and I give it B minus. There was just some booking decisions I didn't really get, and some things that they did that I just really didn't understand. Um, and I thought there was things that could have been done in a better way. But uh, Noah, we'll start with you because your grade is going to be very different than mine. I know. What did you think of AEW Double or Nothing? I don't think you know me for sure. I mean, you can say I've followed this show since day zero. There are definitely some questionable uh, thoughts uh, for me and uh, wild moments, but I look at it also like this, like you do, as I look at all things wrestling. That's why I started ATW. The fact of the matter is, versus our double nothings, it wasn't the greatest, but it still held up to what the show's about and what it needed to do. If nothing else, all you had to do was look at the pillars four-way, and you had your mind's worth when you literally had the retrospective of three years in AEW among four men in the ring. That being said, complete reset to the women's division. The right person finally beat Jay Cargill to be the next TBS champion, though I still believe it should have been on the main event of Dynamite. And literally, that's where it all started to begin with, where the champion was crowned. Should have been the biggest moment on Dynamite on TBS, but I'm that glad to see Chris Tantler back, especially after her uh, road to. The Anarchy in the Arena thing, besides the exploding uh, Air Jordan and Don Cos continuing his uh, mental warfare against Kenny Omega, and we don't know his uh, place right now and all of this, that pretty much is my biggest takeaway from that, but it was still pretty fun. I, I mean, I personally would have closed the pillars, but that's just me. Definitely the Jamie Hayter thing. I feel it was overkill and execution, but I can understand why they did it, and Tony Storm having zero Fs, and the scrum really bringing it all full circle for our winners. I felt really justified what happened on the pay-per-view. So why you gave it a d- B minus? Again, I enjoyed the show top to bottom. I always enjoy uh, AEW. It's just something different about it for me as a fan too. I'm gonna one up you slightly a little bit though, but not too much. And by the way, Orange Cassidy, I don't know how he keeps doing it, but that where I was pretty fun too. That double or nothing pay-per-view is a solid B for me. One thing I forgot to talk about before I get to JJ was the buy-in. I typically I know it's a buy-in, but it's fairly significant because it's a big thing that it's a big news story that happened. Was the six-man tag with the Hardys versus the Firm? I thought that was okay. Um, I don't really get why they're <laughs> continuing this feud. I thought the final Shit. deletion um, was kind of the end. I don't really get what they're doing here, but obviously the biggest thing is Jeff Hardy screwed up the whisper of the wind. But apparently, we find out it's not a botch. It's a sto- it was a storyline injury that they're doing, but it doesn't look that way. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not a botch. It's, apparently it's not this- even a legit injury. I thought he legit tweaked his ankle on a no. No, this uh, this was this was planned. This was part of the match. I don't know why they planned it this way, but this it, this was planned. But even with that, though, I still think Jeff Hardy 
is not the Jeff Hardy of old, though, even if this spot did not happen. Like, he just seemed off in this match, I think. He but, did. I wonder why. Well, he, he, I don't want to assume that yet, but yeah, probably. Mm. Um, mm. But JJ, what would you give AEW double or nothing as like a letter grade and all that type of stuff? I'd give it a B plus. I thought it was a really solid show. It was the first AEW pay-per-view that I was like fully invested in since returning to wrestling. You know, I've kind of been watching Dynamite and Rampage for the better part of a year now. So when they did Forbidden Door last year, when they did Double or Nothing last year, I was still kind of treading water. By the time they get to All Out and all that chaos occurred and then Full Gear, you know, maybe I was six months in. But this was the first one that I was, like, really invested in. I kind of knew the competitors, with the exception of, like, Chris Statlander, really. You know, Mm -hmm. I knew the storylines and had been following everything. And while I was disappointed, the two of the matches I was most looking forward to, I came up on the losing end on. And that, you know, we don't have new tag team champions. And my, my Jade Cargill finally lost her title. It just, it, if those two things had been different outcomes for me, it probably would have been a solid A for me. That's fair. All right, James. But, you've but been... God bless Karen Jarrett for Elka mm. Balning Aubrey Edwards. Mm. That was that was funny. I like. I did like I, that. I've, that already, I've, I've already I, said. I've, I've already said. I've already <laughs> said my piece on Mike Knight. So now we're just waiting for it to become official and my reality to become official. So James, you've wa- you and I watched the first AEW pay per view together. So yes, I. Uh, S rank. This think was of- not. I will say it's it's not a perfect show by any means. Um, I think everybody shares the general consensus that there were some questionable booking decisions. Um, I think that there's a few things I gotta say War, it, Warlow would have been fine if he took the loss and he took the loss dirty and mm-hmm. I mentioned that I think he needs to move on from the TNT title division entirely and I think MJF should have been the one to screw him out of it and Christian Kidd should have gone on a fucking run with this TNT title man like I think he was the right guy to win it and I'm honest to god shocked they didn't put the belt on him here I think Christian has probably produced the second best work in AEW, like, main event-wise, and I think that should be fucking rewarded with a title run of some kind, and I think the TNT title was a perfect fit for Christian. Um, I just I just do. Especially, you know, you consider, you know, they're doing television title versus television title, you would uh, you would assume at Forbidden Door with Zack Sabre Jr. and Samoa Joe... Could you imagine adding Christian fucking Cage to that fucking matchup? Yeah, that'd be oh awesome. Oh my god, that would have been baller. Uh, um, you know, and and it's just it's a shame because I like Warlow, but I, again, I think he's outgrown this, and I don't. I I think he needs to move on to giving Max his win back. You know, I really do think he needs to give his win back because that's the one blemish on his record. Other than Punk, and even then, he beat him once already. He still has yet to beat Wardlow. And Wardlow mm-hmm. beat him clean in the middle of the ring at this very event the year prior. Um, so, I thought they should have done something here. I will say, I did enjoy the, uh, you know, I, I, I know that Art Anderson liked his meat and shit, but I didn't know he was into that dino meat, man. He's into that prehistoric steak. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, god damn, bros, I've never seen a, like, a finger bit to the bone like that before. Arn Anderson, you are a crazy psychopath, and we love you uh, <laughs> for it, but... He is the enforcer for a reason. That is true. But, uh, yeah, that was fun, uh, but, yeah, that, that booking decision, I think, was the most questionable out of everything. Like, even the Jamie Hayter stuff, I give a bit of a pass for, um... You know, if she's legitimately injured, I can live with that, and I won't even factor that into the grade, really, if that's the case, because that's not fair. Um, The only other thing as well, I've been with JJ, and JJ mentioned this, like, I don't even know how many times on open mic night, but I thought they should have gone option C. 
I think Jade should have been on to bigger and better things. I think she was already ready as a wrestler and as a promo at this point to carry that women's world title at this point, especially when you consider the fact that you know, Jamie Hayter, T- Tony Storm, whoever has that title on, on that war front that's going on in AEW right now, title's kind of getting lost in the shuffle a little bit because of it, mm-hmm. which you would think it would have the opposite effect, but kind of not. And, uh, yeah, I think that if you put it on Jade Cargill, Jade would have been that bitch who was like, I don't give a fuck. I'll take you all on. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm undefeated. What you got? <laughs> like, you know, I still, I, I like Statlander, but I think Statlander, if the title was relinquished for Jay to get a shot at the title, then Statlander still could have gotten her moment by winning the title in a tournament of some kind. Like, that could have been her crowning moment is winning the Owen, the female mm-hmm. side of the Owen, and then she gets the title. Um, that way you are making both titles booked better, but, you know, spilt milk, really. Um, with that aside, I'd actually give this a name minus. Um, okay. Only because, again, I'm, I'm going by, I'm not going to count the women's world title match because it was what it was. If they were injured, there's nothing they, that you could have done there. They, they booked what they had to. Uh, I guess Adam Cole and Jericho was, uh, a bit underwhelming too, but... Even then, uh, by my grading system, uh, probably a minus. Okay, say. it's not. It's still a fun show. That fucking pillars four way was off yeah, the charts awesome. good. It's off the charts good, and uh, yeah. I did like the Eric in the arena match, even though that was one of the worst performances of anything I've ever seen. And I've seen Drowning Pool live at WrestleMania X Eight, so. I was so happy that guy got super kicked. I was so happy. Dude, was like, he was like, what <laughs> thing? What thing? a hot seat. Like, I could have fucking done a better job. God damn. So, I'm going to ask the big questions here. Go for it. Uh, there's a few questions. You can all answer. Everyone, best show. What was the best show um, out, of the, uh, out of the weekend? I thought, uh, James, we'll start with you. Best show. Well, considering, even though we're them. not going to cover it, uh, I I say we include Dominion too because Dominion was well. Sure I was thinking since it's, it seemed like for this Noah's sake, you know. I, I'm th- I was thinking this is a fairly sick. This we're going to continue this. I think this was successful. I think it become a Dominion on the next one. That's fair. Um, okay, so out of the out of those four, who I think it's five, but you didn't see one of them. That is true. Uh, yeah, you're right. Five. Oh, you no, know, it's it's Oh, that's right. Oh, shit. Yeah. I I might go with I might go with Impact, you know. Oh yeah. I might go with Impact. But Yeah, I don't only, blame you. Only cuz that fucking main event was ridiculous. Um Ooh, is it Impact or is it Resurgence? It, it's 1A 1B. Fuck it. It'll tie for first for me, I think. I think those were the best shows out of everything uh, during that week of madness, honestly. I think that it's really neck and neck between those two. And this is coming from a, a guy that's followed AEW since day one. This is coming from a guy that has admitted that WWE, even with Vince, you know, being what it is, has, is not the worst I've seen and has even gotten better in a lot of cases. Um, and yeah, man, like, I, I, I just think New Japan and Impact really had a strong outing. Uh, and I, I would say that in a ranking, then you'd have Night of Champions at B, uh, Mm -hmm. Double or Nothing would actually be at a C, and Battlegrounds obviously at D. Sorry, JJ. So, so you already answered what the worst show is, I'll just leave it to you. Uh, out of all the shows, what was the best match, you think? Oh, out of, oh, the best match? Yeah. If I saw Ilya versus Dijak, I'd probably go with that. But because I didn't, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the Pillars Four Way. Okay. Um, but a close second is Steve Macklin versus PCO. That match um, and was then, uh... disgusting, but also fucking gruesome in a in a beautiful way that will never and be then recreated. What... 
So you answered worst show, I think. Technically, it's Battleground because you didn't see it. Um, what was the uh, the worst match of the whole weekend? Because there was of, always a worst. Out of the stuff that I saw, well, definitely Hikaleo versus Kenta. <laughs> That's fail. Hikaleo versus Kenta, but it was so fucking funny. Uh, so and yeah. then, uh, and then there's obviously uh, the two questions. What was a match that like? was a sleeper for you. Like you looked at it and it like exceeded your expectations when you saw ooh. it. Uh, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, the, 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 one of the women's matches from resurgence round one of resurgence. Okay. Basically you get a one, a one B again, like Willow Nightingale had a great match with Momo and, uh, I forget the CML lady, but she had a great match. Stephanie back here. Stephanie, Stephanie back here. Thank you. Uh, and then, uh, she was really good too. And then obviously the opposite side. What was a match that like disappointed you? Like you really expected it to be great, mm. and then you just uh, again not counting the double or nothing uh, booking fiasco that they had to do because Jamie Hader was hurt. Uh, yeah, I'd say probably Christian Cage and Wardlow. Okay, so uh, Noah, same questions to you. Uh, all the lessons I just asked James. Do you need me to repeat them, or do you know all the questions? Go ahead and repeat them in uh, order one at a time. Because again, I'm still awake, but I'm barely yeah. here with you. Best sh- best sh- best show of the weekend. I think uh, I gave it to uh, Under Siege. It didn't feel overkill. It didn't feel like never was out of place or uh, under delivered. It was a good pace. It was a good balance. If it wasn't for that Hickelay versus Kent, I probably would have gave it to Resurgence. For me, I'm going to go Impact Wrestling Under Siege. I thoroughly enjoyed that, top to bottom. Best show. Just because, again, without that story angle, the fact the championship match should have been in the main event was for that angle, happenstance aside, and they still don't know red versus blue, brand split, LOL. I'm going with Night of Champions. That's fine. Uh, Best match of the whole show, of the weekend. That color is fatal fall, oh my god! Fucking incredible. And then second, i probably give it to freaking... Because, again, I've enjoyed them since the redefining the Knockouts Division in 2020. Uh, second, probably be Deion Prowse versus Jordan Grace. And then, obviously, uh, worst match of the weekend. Natalia deserves so much damn better, all right? That's Seriously, fine. she got done fucking dirty. Uh, they're good. canceling out what James like alluded to because, again, they avoided using interim because fuck that shit. Natalia versus Rhea Ripley was... And then uh, a match that exceeded your expectations. Like, it ended up being a sleeper for you. I mean, it's tough to say that for you because you know everybody, but, like, a match that was a real sleeper Well, I don't know everybody, and that's the beauty of watching All Things Wrestling because I learned so much from literally anywhere. And for me, I'm going to give credit to... Can't believe I'm saying this. A sleeper match for me was JJ's Women's Championship match in NXT. Those two women literally went back and forth for 12 minutes. It was equally competitive. Lyra kicked the heads out of Tiffany Stratton, but the knee gave out the first time. Second time go around, she couldn't capitalize. Lyra came with a whisker of Lyra finally becoming an NXT Women's Champion. Tiffany Stratton, why it seemed like, oh, she was destined for this. They gave me that strong suspension of disbelief that it probably couldn't have happened. I gotta give Crabber credits too. Can't deny the work ethic. Tiffany Stratton, Lyra by Curia. Second... I already know the caliber of Mercedes Monet. Stunner Vacure is a standout athlete. I need to see more of on America's side, not just in Mexico. She's tremendous. And then the match that dis- the most disappointed match for you uh, of the weekend. The uh, most disappointing match. Definitely the Heritage Cup, because I did not want TikTok rejects to ruin the uh, credibility of this great legacy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, definitely the Heritage Cup, because fuck those two way over almost drag freaking queen looking bimbos with freaking Noam Dar. Wait. All right, so. Hey, listen. He likes women. It's okay. Not so, those type of women. Ugh. JJ, all the questions to you. Do you need them repeated, or do you know all the questions? Go ahead and just run through them. Again, I'll, I'll try to rapid fire, but I just so I have them in the order. Best show. Night of Champions. Uh, worst show. Only because of my lack of commitment to the wrestlers under siege. Uh, best match of the weekend. Match of the weekend. I got to go with Noah. Either the four pillars match or the tag title match from Night of Champions. With uh, S- Solo and Roman versus the Wild, Sammy Owens. 
Uh, let's see. So yeah, that best match. Okay, so worst match of the weekend. Rhea Natalia and the Kenta Hikaleo. Okay. Uh, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, a match that exceeded your expectations. Uh, Noah said it best. Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany and Lyra Valkyria. And then uh, this, a match that disappointed I think this is going to be obvious. The match that disappointed you the most. I think it's going to be the same match as worst match of the weekend. <laughs> It, it's De- Rhea and the Tars up there, as is the AEW tag titles. Damn it, because Jeff Jarrett <laughs> deserves gold. No, he doesn't. Damn it. Not if he doesn't. Damn it. As long as I mention which is there, damn it. He don't deserve anything. Okay, no, so I, I guess. I, I did that just to get him riled up. On the real, the, the AEW one that disappointed me, even though I knew they weren't going to win, was the House of Black acclaimed match. Like, I really wanted to see Billy Gunn get some gold in 2023. That's the thing I said just to get him riled up, but Billy Gunn yeah. holding gold in 2023 would have been phenomenal. They freaking got caught with the end, and that was it. Good grief. That's fair. All right, so I gotta, now I'm going to talk to myself. i got to ask myself the same questions. <laughs> I have a bunch of people. That's have- such a fucking meta thing you have ever said. i got to talk to myself now to ask myself the same <laughs> questions. <laughs> but you, know, you guys are going to ask me the questions. I gotta ask- I'm got i the host. It's- I'm in a bad spot here. So I, I, can, just- I can ask you the questions. Look, look, at, look, at, right, yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself the a- questions. Uh, you know what, Noah? This is what you should do just for comedic purposes. I don't have a mirror. Hey, no, hey Noah. No, no, no. Just watch me. Just watch me. Hey, no, hey Owen. Uh, what was the best match of the weekend? Oh, gee, Owen. Uh, 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 yeah, just do that. Um, hey, Owen, what was best match of the weekend? So, uh, no, I uh, screwed up the first question. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, so- Lord Almighty, this is so damn stupid. I love what it. Talking about he's doing a great. No, he's not. He's being <laughs> a freaking head. We should be done by right by now. This is Last really, 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 really re-roll. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree, James. This is this is a travesty right now. I don't know what the hell's going on. JJ, you want to join in the act? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. So, yeah, we'll be here with our 15 minutes at this is point. Is JJ is the renegade JJ Williams also good too on your other side? <laughs> There is the other side. <laughs> fun. But anyhow, so, oh, so Owen, what was the best match of uh, the whole my weekend? No, uh, I screwed it up again. What was the best show of the whole weekend? <laughs> well, it's a toss-up. It's between um, Impact <laughs> and uh, Night of Champions. And because I was watching Night of Champions because they had the show and I was really invested in all the storylines, I'm going to give it to Night of Champions. But Impact is, like, really close. Good answer. Um, what was the good worst answer. goal? Yeah, it was a great answer. Good answer, good answer, good answer, good answer. Good answer. Oh, good, good Lord Almighty. Survey said. Um, what was the worst show of the weekend? I really hate to say this because I'm going to get a lot of hate because uh, I'm going to sound like an <laughs> AW hater here. Talking just because to himself. I, I have talking. the whip. I have the flack, and I'm gonna get I'm I'm gonna get hated for this, but it, it was double or nothing. And look, I'm trying to. I I went into the show with a mindset of with open mind, but I, I have to just call it out. I'm gonna get some hate for that though, probably. Um, Dude, th- what this was- is what insanity looks like. Insanity works incorporated. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> then what was the best match of the weekend? Well, it's really tough because. Uh, this is There's a lot of matches that were really great, and I, I'm gonna. This is probably an unpopular opinion. No one really talked about this match, and there's no story behind it. It was just a match. Will Osprey versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. That was like Ooh. on my feet for it. The thing that made me the most happy about it was New Japan has a tendency sometimes to me to not do the obvious thing because sometimes they have a tendency to kind of go back to like the guys they like. I walked out when Will Ospreay won that match. I couldn't believe he won because I was thinking they were going to give it to Tanahashi because of the history that Lance Archer had. But I'm so happy they gave it to Will Ospreay. Like, he's my guy. He's my dude. Um, <laughs> and what was the worst match of the weekend? This has gone beyond insane. I love this. I... I really don't know what the worst match of the weekend was. Uh, there was matches that frustrated me. I can't really say Tiffany Stratton versus Lyra because I have to. I even have to say that was a good match. Uh, but if I had to pick a worst match of the weekend, uh, and again, I won't pick Jamie Hayter versus uh, Tony Storm for obvious reasons and all that type of stuff. 
Good answer. I really didn't like the New Japan Strong match. It just really didn't make sense. The, the main like New Japan Strong match between uh, Hikaleo. Do, do you like, by the way, how I'm explaining to this myself? Like, I'm like, yeah, the main New Japan Yeah, Strong Yeah, match. you're like talking to your fucking subconscious. <laughs> The subconscious of the bird. The Birdman is interviewing Owen Finch right now. This is what's happening. He's just and there's the no mirror and there's no mirror involved here. Or CGI magic. I Notice like there was no. And then what was uh the uh match that exceeded your expectations? There we go. I don't think a lot of people are gonna say this. A match that really exceeded my expectations was ABC versus Subculture because Ooh, I, really I knew that was gonna be a banger. Are you kidding me? I really wasn't a big fan of subcultures one in NXT UK. It was I thought it was really bad. They, they they didn't have the best. They had good tag matches, but they got that WWE stink off of them. If uh, I had to say, fair. if I had to say another one, ironically enough, it was Zack Saber Jr. and uh, Big Dude Tito versus uh, the the CML guys. Tito. Bad Dude bad Tito. Bad Dude Tito versus uh, yeah the, the virus and uh, the company blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that that exceeded expectations. Then what was a match that disappointed you? Uh, I gotta give it to I gotta give it to Adam Cole versus uh, Chris Jericho. That's a it's a match that I've wanted to see for a while. A match that um, oh, was a dream match, and it felt like AEW. This is gonna sound, I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite. It felt like AEW kind of gave it the it match. Sound like a hypocrite. The, it felt like AEW kind of gave it. They added all this stuff in the match that I don't really think needed to be there. So I thought I'm gonna give it to Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho. And I, I think Jericho's be. I, I, I'm saying this. I think Jericho's being done dirty because. Uh, he, yeah, a little back, bit, a little bit. Because he hasn't won. A, I don't think yeah. he's won a big feud since uh, he was our weight champion. And, but he uh, doesn't necessarily need to win a big feud. If we're being perfectly honest here. Yeah, he's a ten-time world champion, not an Ocho. He's actually ten. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's but Jer- I, I think Jericho. I think Jericho though. Um, like it does. Like this victory, I don't know if we'll do much for Adam Cole, but we'll see. Especially too, because they're, the, they're doing the mix tag on Dynamite. That doesn't make sense. Why would you do a mix tag? Like it felt like the blow off there. I don't, I don't get the it. Mix tag has actually happened. Please go check out your spoilers at AllEliteWrestling.com. Thank you. Um, I would say they should have flipped them. They should have done the mix tag, and they should have done the lights out match at a different time. Yeah. But then that way, Britt Baker that. and Soraya get onto the show. So. There you go. There you go. Yeah. What a great interview with the Birdman and Owen Finch. So now this, we know that feel, Owen is more. Now we know Owen's more than capable of running the rundown completely by himself. That's gonna be a wild one, dude. Can I like? I have to do like a skit now where I just have Owen in four different places at the same time. <laughs> talking about yeah, that's four, four different that, four different colored shirts. How is that gonna work though? Like you have to get like different timelines and all that type of stuff. Oh, like, he'll, just, he'll just splice a bunch of clips together. You forget who you're talking to. I will That's make true. it happen. <laughs> I can make it happen. Imagine you know? there being an alternate me. I'm wearing the blue. He's wearing the red. Yeah. The red one's WWE Pro. The blue one's AEW Pro. Bro. And a gold one comes in. That's freaking NWA Pro. What the yeah. fuck? Bro. Oh, there's I, not going to be that one. I talked to a fridge demon before a voice was even heard on the air. Hey, um, uh, fridge that was demon. Awesome. I what still use that, by the way. It's we have it's one good. <laughs> go back Thursdays. I still use that as you should. We have one more uh, thin news thing to talk about. Oh, CM God. Punk was <sighs> returned as confirmed. He's going to be real, you or not. And real quick, <laughs> before we do that, before we do that, I, I, exactly, Noah. I got a break. I got an ad break, and we got to go to that ad break so then we can go to the final ad break so we can do our plugs right after that ad break. It, okay. it's, it's a cool little system I got set up. You're okay. overkilling the word ad break. Ad breaks! Bro. Oh, bro, you're killing the ad break, bro. We're having ad breaks, bro. We gotta have the advertisement, bro. We'll be right back. I want royalties for this, alright? This is way too much ad break. This bro. is... You'll get the royalties, bro, when I'm dead. Alright, we'll be right back, bro. But then he ended up joining WCW and the Alliance. Because when people think WCW, they think of the, the guy that basically... Um, help WWF win the war. Stone Cold to the boss. Eric Bischoff, Uncle Bischoff, doesn't like his nephew Eugene. And we got Coach in Ohio, sporting Michigan colored you. That pissed me off. Don't even get me started on Tony Storm crying. Oh, she cried. And the glass shatters. He opens the door. And off we go. All oh, ensues. Yep. Go all the way towards the dipping dots section, where <laughs> Cody dumps his oh, head, Jericho's yep. head in the dipping dots. That was my, that's my favorite favorite part. Part. Next was uh, best friends getting interviewed, um, and uh, and somewhere 
Jim Cornette had a connection fit. I got a ticket! I got a ticket! Get out of here! You don't mess Get with out of here! I have a ticket! And literally, security and the police escort the Nightmare family off the premises. M yep. M MJF says, how, how, how you looking now, midlife, Chris? Cause I keep sticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home But my balls keep telling me to let me out Oh, just let me out That cock keeps sticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Indie Force fans of all ages. I am Luke Lynch, commander of the Legion, and if you have not already, check out my adventure vlog series over on my channel. Um, grant you, it's not the most often updated series, it's <laughs> definitely far from frequently updated, but when it is updated, it's good times, geeky, nerdy, and fun times all around with cool geeks from all walks of life. For example, YouTubers, content creators, Twitch streamers, you name it, I've got it, all on The Adventures of Luke Lynch, which you can find on my channel. Subscribe, like, comment, watch, share, do the whole thing under the umbrella of For The Win Productions. Future James, take it away with that outro. YouTube, Retro Gaming, Pro Wrestling, Podcast, Terry Balea, Habiki Honors, Habiki Quickie, everything in between. Hit that subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at the Habiki TMD. And hey, hey, watch out for pedestrians, pal. You, yeah, you on the bike. Slow down. Hit that subscribe down below. Check us out at the Habiki TMD on Twitter, Habiki TMD on YouTube. Oh, the goddamn goodness. So one final news then we're gonna break down because it's really big news stuff. Um, Vince uh, made a correction this week. AJ Styles is on Raw brand split day. No, that's not the news. <laughs> uh, that was the damn news. I, the real news. That's funny. Um, but anyhow, Jay just poops poor, and all it takes is just Vince to edit the show like that. That's just his poop is officially proven. There you go. Um, but. The real news is CM Punk is going to be returning and showing up on AEW Collision. I haven't been able to watch Dynamite yet, but I did see this. Apparently, Tony Khan announced this. It was like one of those backstage announcements, and that CM Punk's going to be there. I think they announced him so the show would sell out because CM Punk's a draw, whether people like to admit it or not. Um, however, from what I hear... The fans didn't really react all that well. They were not happy to hear this news. They don't want CM Punk back. I th um, so it is what it is. Well, I don't it was mind. it was fifty fifty. He's got he got the Cena reaction when he was announced. Actually, um, I'm excited. I know to see CM Punk back. I like CM Punk. I know there's a lot of controversy around him right now, but um, I enjoy him. Um, obviously, I feel like the, I know a lot of people don't want this, but I feel like they're missing out on an opportunity to. Find a way to talk to each other, the elite and CM Punk, and uh, do which a I, feud. Which I think I, that would be. For the record, now that you mentioned that, I'll, I'll interject and say they want to. They just can't because of legal bullshit. Okay. So that's fair enough. But it, it sucks that that stuff's in the way. Because um, I feel like they, AEW would make money. I do like the idea of them doing collision. It does suck the reasons they have to do collision. Uh, but I feel like it's going to benefit AEW because now that there's no more dark and elevation, uh, they have to find another show for people to go on, and Rampage can't be the show. 
Um, I'm really happy they're doing it this way. I think CM Punk coming back. I don't know what CM Punk's going to do when he comes back. That's why I kind of wish Jericho did beat Cole because I feel like Jericho is a perfect first feud for him because of everything that they've been going through, and I feel like Jericho winning would have helped that. Um, but there's a lot that CM Punk can do when he comes back. Um, I think he should go heel. Uh, um, I think uh, that doesn't make sense for him to come back as a babyface. I think he should go full on heel, really give into it, align himself with MJF, and find a way to do that. And I think that would be awesome. But I know I know it wouldn't make sense, but it would honest it, it really makes sense for CM Punk to align himself with MJF. I'm, this isn't my idea, admittedly. If you watch Punk's Fun Known and Adam Blompage booking, it's a really good idea to have CM Punk align himself with MJF. The fact that MJF basically took everything from CM Punk and them being a heel duo, I think, would be funny. But I don't think that's going to happen um, because they need M- a- MJF on the regular Dynamite, I think. So I don't think uh, that's going to happen. So, um, yeah. JJ, what do you think of the news of CM Punk coming back? I I think I'm tired of talking about the news of CM Punk being back. I think everyone in the room can agree to that. Yeah, but yeah. But this You'll is be a different I format. No, I I know yeah. that's what I was just about to say. This is a different format, so you haven't heard my views on it. So we'll go ahead. I think anybody. And I don't care if you're a casual fan. I don't care if you're a diehard fan. I don't care if you've got the elites, the elites dick down your throat. Anybody that doesn't see how this is good for business <clears throat> needs to just turn off their TV when it comes to pro wrestling. Yeah. Period. Point blank. If you are mad that CM Punk is coming back, you do not understand business. Nope. Period. Whether you want to admit, like you said, whether you want to admit CM Punk is a draw or not, all you got to do is look at the ratings. The mm-hmm. numbers all across they, the board. They were getting over a million views on a consistent basis, maybe not weekly, but a consistent basis when Punk was there. Yep. Brawl out occurred, and the ratings began to go down. And whether the Die hard AEW yeah. tribalists. Would you admit it or not? The minute the elite came back and began taking shots at Punk, the ratings went down even more. Yeah, there was a lot of people that they pissed off at the time. Yeah. That that's the only part of this and your whole thing about Punk coming back and being healed that doesn't make sense to me. Is Everything Punk has said has been truth. Yeah. And how do you boo a guy that's been that accurate? Yep. I think why I say he, 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 his whole thing in the, the promo was he's tired, he's sore, and he works with children. And then they come out and they start mocking him on TV. As, like children. And then the, like children would. And the I fucking think... dirt sheets did not help matters because they kept no. fucking. Going to, to the point where at double or nothing, all four of them were singing along to carry on Wayward Son. Which, if y'all don't realize out there in the general audience that that song is picked as a dig at CM Punk, turn in your wrestling fandom card. Now, yeah. again, the reason, go ahead. Oh, sorry. The reason I say heel is because if he talks bad about it's typically not very well. The only t- I guess he could make it work. If you're talking bad about the company that you're on, on the company that you're signed to, it's really tough to get over the fact that you're a face. Like, CM Punk, I think, has to be a heel because it just doesn't make... Uh, maybe not a heel, but he's got to be some type of... Ant- he can't come back and just pretend nothing ever happened, really. Like, he's got to yep. have an edge to well, him when yeah. he comes back, at least. Well, yeah, not the I wrestler mean, edge. He, he definitely needs to not pretend like nothing That's happened, fair. but he needs to come back... He needs to come out there, take the microphone, sit in the middle of the ring with his legs crossed... And point out how everything he said at that media scrum was accurate. And then it's on the fans whether they want to own it and boo him for telling the truth or not. Because his whole straight edge savior was based on telling truth and he still got heel heat for it. He did. He did. So, So you can still work it in that aspect. But at the end of the day, everything he has said is accurate. So, James, 
because we're going to talk anyways. What do you think of CM Punk coming back, and how do you, I guess how what do you think they should do with him when he comes back? Because look, that's kind of also been the topic and everything. Like, what do you think should happen when he comes back? I think Punk is absolutely needed. Um, while I don't think he's going to be the main reason Collision succeeds ultimately, um, because he wasn't the main reason Dynamite succeeded. He was just a big component of it, very big component of it at that. Um, I think that he is needed to definitely get that launch going. Uh, he's definitely needed to sell out the tickets at Wembley, which, by the way, uh, as we recorded on Open Mic Night, they are literally like 5,000 seats away from doing so. That's how quick that almost sold out, uh, with Punk just being announced back on AEW television. Uh, I think Punk being back is good for business, as JJ said. Um... I'm under the impression that the minute they are under the same roof, at the same point in time, that legal bullshit that's holding them away from apologizing is going to go out the fucking window that day because they're, Tony Khan's going to force whatever legal representative is putting that burden on them, he's going to force their hand there. Because both of them want to apologize. Kenny Omega has made that very clear that he wants to fucking do business. Punk has made that adamantly clear that he wants to do business. Even the Young Bucks have made it very clear that they want to do business. The only one that we have seen publicly that has fucking trashed Punk is fucking Brandon Cutler because he wanted to get himself over instead of fucking, you know, going back to the gimmick that actually worked instead of being a fucking lackey, but I digress. Uh... That's neither here nor there. Uh, so I thought you were gonna say I thought you were gonna say Adam Page at first. Well, yeah, Adam Page too. But again, and Adam Page also wants to work it out. He, and, and keep in mind, I'm pretty sure those two have already reconciled. Only because I think FTR. I think they probably fucking fixed that because FTR's friends with both of them. Because. Mm-hmm. They're drinking buddies with Paige, and they're friends with Punk. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, I think um, everybody is willing to fucking move on and actually do bi- do business, make money with this, and make a profit for AEW. I think they're past their bullshit. It's the legal ramifications right now that are in the way. That goes out the window by the next pay-per-view. So um, I'm glad he's back because at the end of the day, this, other than in storyline, will be the fucking last time we ever have to talk about that brawl out bullshit. That's the only like I could give a fuck um, how it happened. It needed to be Punk is back and the Elite is also still there. It couldn't have been one goes and then the other goes because then it just would have been for like the next five years, and the IWC would have never shut up, and then we would have been like. Hey, why are we why are we covering wrestling again? And then we would have just been sad. And no one mm-hmm. likes no one likes a sad James. No one likes a sad renegade. No one likes a sad Owen. And uh, for sure, as we have known from experience, no one likes a sad Noah Foster. Don't make well, me yeah, sad. for real. The the That's only cool. thing I would have really changed in all of this, and granted, he was still injured for a while, but the minute they announced that the elite was coming back. They should have announced that Punk is still with the company and is free to come back as soon as injury is over. That way it would have appeared as if they weren't playing favorites. Yeah, that's fair too. Yeah. Yeah. But for the Elite to be announced back, whatever it was, November, December, and Punk not coming back for six months later, even being announced he's coming back for six months later, clearly makes it seem like they were playing favorites. And that's just going to add more gasoline to Punk's fire when he comes back and gets that first pipe bomb off. Yeah. If they had announced both of them, or all four of them technically at the same time, we we would have stopped talking about this New Year's. Yeah. Yeah. We would have probably stopped talking about this around Christmas time, to be honest. Great. Well, I I only say New Year's because you always do, you know, the year-end stories for New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. So. Um, so, Noah, you're the last, and you're like, I don't think you're an AEW, like, loyalist. Like, you're obviously a loyal to the company, but I don't think, uh, you will admit when AEW does something bad and all that type of stuff. 
Um, you're not completely in the AEW like bubble like that. Like you have your critiques about AEW, obviously. You're not completely blind to that. But what you obviously have been watching AEW since day one. You're probably the biggest AEW fan out of all of us and everything like that. What do you think about CM Punk coming back now and everything like that and everything um, Travel- about that? Tribalism be, tribalism be damned, go fuck yourself. Uh, as far as this goes, yeah, again, from a business standpoint, CM Punk, he does draw a bigger viewership. Whether or not he draws a bigger rating at the key demographic, that remains to be seen, but AEW still exists without him being directly involved, so there's that. As far as CM Punk, it'll bring more eyes because people recognize him, whether he's controversial, whether he's liked, whether he is dismissed, based on the actions with the uh, Young Bucks in particular, that still right now probably is the most unknown to everybody. The biggest important thing here is that we're moving on from the past, focusing on the future, and trying to do what's best for business. I may not be always on Virtue's page. I may not be always on JJ's page. I may not be always on the No DQ Review. But at the end of the day, this is the wrestling industry. And if you want to thrive, everybody needs to suck up, quit fucking up, work together, do what's best for the environment around you and those you work with. Respect be damned. Don't have to like a person. But if there's money to be made, that's why you're in this damn thing. So I'm very curious to see what CM Punk will do during his return back to AEW on the WWE Collision and who he starts to feel with too. Now, Tony Condo is playing politics and favoritism and giving CM Punk pretty much the follow the world however you wish, make sure it's the end that you like, then he's already fucked up before it's actually begun. It really comes down to how this is executed for me. But as far as CM Punk coming back, it's no difference for me. I watch the product, I react to the product, I hate it, I love it. It's the same thing with everything I've wrestling but AEW just has a higher tolerance for me because of the variety in the town in the storytelling Tony Condo he needs to show me better authority and CM Punk needs to show me some well long overdue respect that so called he wants from everybody show it to everybody else and show me you have some actual humility let's see what happens CM Punk returns in Denver for me though I'm gonna watch but again like I said for AEW this summer make or break they get one second chance they're not going to get another. This fucks up. Yeah. By the way, let's also, all the AEW loyalists out there, take notes from Noah. That is a true AEW loyalist right there. Someone who loves the product since day one. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Dude. I was going to say, there, there's a difference between being an AEW loyalist. And an AEW dick and writer. And an AEW tribalist. And an AEW dick writer. And by the way, all is a testament to every wrestling company you watch. Do yep. not be a fan of the company. Be a fan of the people within the company and support your fucking wrestlers, your workers yeah. that make you put your ass in that seat. I mean, it's not like they're adding money to your 403B and you're going to get a freaking six-figure portfolio. Get off their freaking cock and learn what it means to be a fan or get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> the only company that you could argue that for is WWE if you are, in fact, a stockholder. Well, that yeah. and and they also have but, but they no, actually no have other a cock. Company is publicly traded, so and that and they actually have a cock, you know, the peacock. Yeah, yeah, they do. So there you go. All right, so I think that was great. We did a great show there. Thank you for everyone for sticking through it. I know it was relatively long and everything like that, but uh, that's the rundown. I, it's not like you guys aren't used to doing long shows. I've seen I see how long your open mic nights go and everything like that. That's so, fair. um, but. Yeah, I hope you guys will do this again. I think we're going to do the next one. I don't exactly know when, but there'll be one covering NWA, Crockett Cup, uh, NJPW, uh, Dominion, some type of WWE show. I don't know what, because there's not a pay-per-view until July, and then uh, some type of uh, AEW show. So we'll do another one. Yeah. Um, against all odds, too. I don't want to forget about that one. So we'll, we'll do another one down. I hope you guys, I hope everyone that's here can be on it. Um, real, real quick, before we go into our typical things which is very short plugs we got a big long plug jj knows the plug because i send it to him every week uh it's the ftw what's up coming we're gonna play that because that's like the only thing we have that's a long gated plug and it's kind of condensed there and then we get to plug our uh little series in about a minute or less and yeah it's a little tradition we have on open mic night because we all scream plugs uh but we'll get to that when we get there so yeah one more ad break, and we come right back for plugs, and then we come right back to end this fucking show so that way no can go to bed.
scan the QR codes to see what's upcoming for FTW Productions and what's available on demand right now. Button Master Stable Wars Entire Playlist FTW Productions Watch Party for WrestleMania Go Home Raw Mistress Audio Dramatic Readings featuring voice actors from Weymouth Youth Wrestling All Retro Wrestling Review Series videos on demand and upcoming All WrestleMania themed retros available now on demand Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Let's Play Series WrestleMania 19 Revenge Mode Let's Play Series all of a Simple Man's Brand Simply Predicting Panels. Both episodes of The Don DeMarco Show. AEW Spark, WWE Aftershock, every show week by week. Indie Force Episode 26, available now on demand. Jeff Meacham Network, all watch along events. AEW Double or Nothing Dynamite Go Home Show Watch Party, available now on demand. A Simple Take, WWE Simple Takes featuring Cassidy 18 Studios, Super Mario Bros. Z Voice Acting, Episode 3 coming soon. Breaking News, ATW View Impromptu, WYW Intro and Immortal Stream. Wrestling with Idiocy Episode 8, Fast Food and Restaurants Discussion. Plugs have concluded. On to the video. And we are back. It's been a long ride. And we have uh, made it to the end of what was basically the crazy ass, almost damn near month of wrestling content. Uh, we, we're we going to be able to sleep soon though. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I promise. But first, we got... This little thing that we always do every rundown, and it's called plugs. We shall plug it. Plugs. 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 Absolute plugs. A plugs. Plugs, bro. Plugs. Plugs, bro. Plugs, bro. Plugs. Absolute plugs, bro. Too much plugs. Too much plugs. Too much plugs. <laughs> oh, we gonna have a problem here with the plugs, huh? Uh, <laughs> I got more outlets. Do we need more outlets? <laughs> Enough of the plugs. Get, the plugs. Get to the plugs. Get to the plugs. All right, get to get to the plugs now. Ah! All right, uh, so. Too much plugs. Uh, oh, I, I got that reference, Sylvester Stallone. Good shout, Noah. Good shout. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Uh, JJ, we'll start with you first since you are our uh, resident guest here uh, for this episode of the Wrestling Rundown. In under a minute, where can people find you on the YouTube, Twitter, and anywhere else on social media? Find me on Twitter at ROWJJ Williams, Instagram, The Renegade JJ Williams, YouTube, Casa D18 Studios, where we have a members only section with exclusive wrestling content, including Noah and I's watch along for Battleground this past week. You can also find all of my Renegades reviews there as we celebrate Johnny Depp's 60th birthday this month. So there you go. And not to mention as well, since we still have a little bit under uh, over the minute, you will be on an ODQ review as well. Uh, yes. So if you guys want to go and re-watch that, because by the time you see this, it would already have happened, go watch JJ yes. on No DQ Review. Aaron Riff's YouTube channel is where you can check that out. No! Oh, wait. Should I say... I'll, uh, you know what? I'll go next because we like to have Noah either as the semi-main or the, or the main. Uh, so I'll, I'll go next. You guys can follow me on YouTube. YouTube.com slash user slash jhebertside95. That is also my Twitter handle. You can follow that at jhebertside95. Everything that you have saw in that last ad is everything that you can see upcoming for FTW Productions and possibly more, especially for the Je uh, Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media. Um, check it all out. It's good shit. Such good shit, pal. So go check it all out. QR codes in the plugs. So there you go. Well, in the ads before the plugs, but you got what I'm saying. Bro, it's good shit, bro. It's good shit, good bro. Good shit, bro. Good shit, bro. Uh, speaking of which, bro. Oh, uh, bro. What you got to plug, bro? So I got this channel, Wrestling Fortune 44. Uh, we have some great stuff coming. Uh, retro Wrestling Review Series coming back for Money in the Bank. Uh, and we're going to do a bunch of retros for that. 
Uh, not just for Money in the Bank, but for other shows coming up. So that'd be on the lookout for that. WWE Aftershock, AEW Spoke. Um, oh, and the Talkinator. Obviously, in the ads, uh, we're going to be finally launching new stuff on the Owner Talkinator channel um, in two weeks. Uh, the intro is going to be made. It might be a week, but we're saying two weeks just in case uh, shit hits the fan. Um, and then uh, FTW uh, Main Hub, which used to be the CM Brothers channel, uh, basically uh, anything FTW related will be going there too. Like that's uh, basically best of like FTW. Catalog. Best best of our FTW Productions content is going to be airing, uh, very similar to JJ's Throwback Thursdays on his channel. So that should be uh, a whole lot of fun. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And with that said, my good sir Noah. You are the hardest working man in the IWC, and don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. My good sir, like you can only so expertly do, take us home, good sir. Uh, okay. Well, usually people, I go out like this, because if you want to know more about me, know this. For I am just a simple man and a lifelong fan. A professional respect! But I digress. Find me on the Twitter and YouTube and in Foster 1916 for all fans wrestling. Shout out, of course, to the entire ATW fan across the Twitter and our social media platforms. Later on this week, of course, we'll be simply predicting for our Impact Wrestling Against the Odds on my simple YouTube channel, followed by across the Japanese Direct Multiverse and Mia, a live watch live event for Impact Wrestling Against All Odds. As we move into the weekend for the weekly Saturday Night Shenanigans that are open by and hosted by JJ Williams. And the month, of course, continues with so much more simple predicting, so much more simple takes, so much more ATW impromptu views as we get closer to the Owen Forbidden Door and Collision, and there will be some other activities, including game show based uh, things here, too. But as always, let it conclude, there are no winners, no losers, no betters. Just fans with opinions for this passion we all share. At the end of the day, folks, support one another, respect each other, protect your mentality, too. Treasure your families and just enjoy life, and enjoy professional wrestling. It's as simple as that. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. So, Owen, I'm going to send it to you last so you can do your catchphrase. Make sure you do it. And then i got to go to the uh, main screen right after you say that because uh, I'm going to retell the joke. But we'll get to that joke later. Uh, so, for the Heat Man, James Heber, for the renegade of wrestling, J.J. Williams, for the simple man with a spectacular voice, and a hell of a call this weekend's absolute madness. Noah Foster. This is your host, the Birdman Owen Finch. That's pretty much it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. And since this is being recorded in the past, we will talk to you guys in the future. So I got a joke for you to end this real quick as we uh, wait for this to do this thing. What does Roman Reigns say to Noah to acknowledge him? What do you think he says, Owen? What does he say to acknowledge him? No! <laughs> there you go. There you go. Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Take the work week off five days in the bucket. Fuck it, you got a boss who's a jerk who doesn't. Throw on some Wu Tang, bring the motherfucking ruckus. There is no pretext. We are living and we love it on a budget. Never mind, we just nudge it to the side. Give the kids a little time. We are living till we die. Focused and we hustle, but we still be getting high. No exception to the rule. Do what you do to get by. Cause I keep ticking like a metronome. And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home. But my